You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. That Now, after uh, Ossoff uh, voted early, he then went to Morris Brown College. Remember, we had the president on here talking about them pursuing uh, a reaccreditation. And there, Ossoff talked about the importance of Morris Brown and what he would do for HBCUs if he is elected United States Senator. Here is some of that uh, discussion. I want to point out it's been eight months since the U.S. Senate passed any direct stimulus payments for the American people, and they've decided after eight months of obstruction, they're going to send $600. Well, for folks who are unable to make the rent, can't make the car payment, can't afford the prescriptions, behind on the bills, $600 is a joke. And the truth of the matter is that they don't care about regular people. If the most powerful investment banks in the country, stock valuations started plummeting overnight, they would jet back to Washington in four hours and pass legislation. But when it's ordinary people, when it's corner mechanics, small businesses, they held it up for eight months and they cut it in half to $600. I would have voted for the bill, but it's a joke. $600? So we need to reorient the mindset of our elected officials toward helping regular people. And that has to happen at the ballot box. And the polls are open right now. And let me be clear that President James and I were discussing this back in the spring. We were talking about what Georgia's United States Senate offices can do to help accelerate mm. the process of reaccreditation. Under your leadership, Mr. President, that applications be accepted. They'll be here in January, and it may be as soon as the springtime yes. that Morris Brown will be eligible for those kinds of federal grants. So. Expanding the Pell Grant program should be non-controversial. When I debated my opponent, and I'm not going to get too partisan here at an educational event, but I'll just say this. When I debated my opponent in Savannah back when he would debate me, and I was arguing for expansion of the Pell Grant program, he denounced that as socialism. Expansion of the Pell Grant program, college affordability, Bishop, have you noticed that there's always money for tax giveaways for wealthy donors? There's always money for bank bailouts. There's always money for war. But then when you start talking about making college affordable for young black people in this country, suddenly the country has no resources. It's about priorities. And Morris Brown and HBCUs must be among the highest priorities for political leaders. It's been too long since political leaders talked about ending poverty in America. We've become, I think, too cynical, yes. unwilling to dream about what's possible. We should not accept that poverty and homelessness are inevitable or necessary in our society. As long as there are poverty and homelessness, we are failing as a people. 
So we need to once again talk about ending poverty in America, talk about ending homelessness in America. The problem of gentrification in the urban core of this city, and again, I want to observe the discrepancy between the level of public resources invested in entertainment and the level of public resources invested in education. As people are forced out and as black communities are forced out of the center of the city by the rising property taxes, our government's failure to invest in transit, in transportation, and in affordable housing means that people are living far from where they work and can barely put a roof over their heads. And that's why we need an infrastructure and jobs bill as part of a relief effort after COVID-19 that will include investments in transit and transportation and in affordable housing. I believe that was our last question for our time today. Sir, we want to thank you again for being here today. Thank you. You know, just for the media to know, an invitation went out to everyone, and you were the only one that responded. And so we want to thank you for your investment into HBCUs, specifically here at Morris Brown College. Morris Brown is back. We're going to bring this institution back stronger than ever. The only black college in Georgia founded by African Americans, for us, by us, and an institution that is a haven for hungry souls. We don't turn folks away. Anyone who deserves an education, anyone who wants an education, the doors are open here at Morris Brown. And we appreciate your support. As soon as I leave here, I'm headed over to vote. So we encourage the entire community to please vote. And thank you so much for, again for being here today. Thank you. 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 This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I'm doing great. Wasn't this a great rally? Uh, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, first of all, thank goodness uh, there was no rain. Otherwise, we'd be... <laughs> We'll be, we'll be playing in the mud over here. Uh, but uh, one of the things that jumps out, yesterday, amazing turnout on the first day of early voting. Fair Fight says 41% of the turnout, African American. Well, I'm so excited to hear that. And, and just to have President-elect Biden here really speaks to how important it is. And we need all of the influence and excitement that we can get because it's always a challenge to get people to show up. It for runoffs in our state. So I'm glad that all eyes are on Georgia. And we did it in November. We'll do it again. Uh, you talked about it in your speech. You had to deal with that uh, in, term, in terms of uh, running in a runoff uh, and, uh, and and eat out a win. And it's it's all about ground game. It's all about, you know, it's really just driving folks. You can run all the ads you want to, but you really got to touch the folks to get them to know the actual runoff date. Hit Strategy did a poll with black with uh, higher heights. And 35% of the black women who were surveyed didn't even know the date was January 5th. And so that's the other thing as well. No, it's so important because we have to educate people. We have so many new voters in this state, and so so many people believe that they got it done when they went in November, and they don't even understand the concept of a runoff. And that's why it's important for us as elected officials and community organizers to educate people and tell them why it's important. And when we tell people why it's important, they, sh they will show back up to vote. 
uh, President elect Joe Biden gave you a special shout out. You were one of the early supporters uh, of, of Biden. And I remember at the debate in Atlanta, there were some other mayors, I won't say their names, uh, who were uh, jumping ship and uh, going to other candidates. Uh, and you were not shy about uh, calling them out. And I still do it every opportunity. <laughs> that I get. Shall I start the roll call right now? We're not going to say anything, Steve Benjamin, Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Steve is going to kill us both. <laughs> but, that, I, that, you know, Steve, Steve is our friend, and, and uh, obviously that, that was a tough decision. Um, we won't get into to the details of that, but he wasn't the only one. So I'm just glad we're all one family again. Of course, and then, of course, having Osop and Warnock. Um, it's very interesting. I interviewed both of them, and it's it's very rare to see candidates essentially run together as opposed to running separate races. It is. I've, I've never seen it, at, at least in my voting life in Georgia. I don't know when, if ever, we've had two Senate runoffs. So this is just such an extraordinary time for so many reasons in this state. But to have the opportunity to change the landscape of the United States Senate is an opportunity. If it's ever happened in this state, I don't remember it. And, um, it, and on top of all of that, just two immensely qualified men who will represent us so well. All right, last point here. Uh, just looking to the camera there. There's somebody out there who is registered, but they're like, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know if this politics stuff, it doesn't work. It's not really going to solve any problems. My neighborhood hasn't changed. My community hasn't changed. What would you tell that person who is on the fence about voting in these runoff races? Every election is another opportunity to get it right. That's what our democracy is all about. We are not a perfect country, but every few years we have an opportunity to work towards creating something better for our communities. And it all, the power is within each of us. Our vote is our voice. And we spoke loud and clear. We made a change in the state. We made a difference across this nation. And the opportunity to have two senators to support the agenda of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris um, is an opportunity that probably will come once in a lifetime. And we have to exercise our right to vote, as Congressman Lewis reminded us, because if we don't, we could lose it. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. To get a sense of how desperate they are, look how desperate they are uh, in Georgia. They've been attacking Pastor Raphael Warnock and... They're, try they're trying to Jeremiah write him. They've been sending around, and I've seen it from Dinesh D'Souza to Nikki Haley, Tom Cotton, Marco Rubio, all these people here. Uh, so go to my iPad. This is the 26-second video that they have been sending around. So watch this. America, nobody can serve God and the military. You can't serve God and money. You cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. America, choose ye this day whom you will serve.
choose ye this day. Now, that, now that's it. That's the clip. No other context. Oh, they've been trashing him, saying he's against the military, and how dare he and Georgia voters. So Nikki Haley actually, so I'm gonna show you the attack ad they put out. Y'all play the video. This is what Nikki Haley and the Republicans are now using to attack the faith of Pastor Raphael Warnock. Watch. How bad is Raphael Warnock for America? Let's count the ways. Raphael Warnock is a proud defender of anti-America pastor Jeremiah Wright. That's right, this guy. No, 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 not God bless America, God damn America. Warnock's response? We celebrate Reverend Wright. He is a preacher and a sure. prophet. Warnock even called police gangsters and thugs. Police power showing up in a kind of gangster and thug mentality. Warnock's church hosted a love fest with communist dictator Fidel Castro. And Warnock signed an anti-Semitic letter accusing Israel of apartheid and supporting boycotting Israel. Warnock eulogized cop killer Troy Davis. Warnock supports socialized medicine that would end private insurance and put government in charge of health care decisions. And Raphael Warnock supports trillions in new tax increases, even on working families. So how bad is Raphael Warnock now, for America? Now, come on, come on, come on. Let's review. All right, I, I can build out of that crap. Now, one, now I want y'all to show what they did there, uh, 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 Robert. First of all, they put, uh, uh, they put all the black stuff up front. And they put the taxes and the health care stuff at the back. <laughs> they throw in there that he gave a eulogy to Troy Davis. I, I didn't realize it was against Christianity for pastors to give eulogies to folk who, who died. I, but, I, but I guess for them, uh, it, it, it doesn't even matter. But there's a video that somebody sent me. First of all, I'm trying to get my hands on the full sermon so we can have the sermon in context. I had to do the exact same thing when it went up to Rev, Rev, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. But y'all watch this. Republicans not going to show y'all this video. This, is, this here is a video of Raphael Warnock welcoming to his church a Republican named Johnny Isaacson. Who is that? Oh, that's the Republican who was a U.S. Senator from Georgia before Kelly Leffler. This was at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Watch. And um, he and I are friends. Uh, we've had a good relationship and good dialogue across the years. He's a father and a grandfather. He's here with his lovely wife, Diane. Stand up, Mrs. Isaacson. We're glad to see you, Mrs. Isaacson. She said, yes. <laughs> Would you give a great big Ebenezer welcome to Senator Johnny Isaacson? He just wants to say hello and goodbye. We're grateful for his service. Raphael, thank you very much. Raphael and I are on a first name basis. We are great friends, and I consider him one of the great friends I've gained over the years in being in public life. That's the one thing about public life. You make lots of friends. You want to make sure, always sure they're not ones with their picture in the post office, but there were others at Ebenezer Church or some other good place to pray. But I'm glad to be here today to, to bring you a message, and I, I asked to become, I call Raphael and say, can I come? He said, well, you're leaving. I said, no, I'm not leaving, I'm just retiring. There's a difference. Leaving is the next step, and I ain't, I ain't hurrying that, that one up any at all. <clears throat> but I wanted to come and just say thank you for all the things you've done for me over the last uh, 45 years. I've been in elected office 45 years in Georgia. I was, uh, I was born here in uh, 1944, and I've been here ever since. And love this city and love this place and love all of you. And as Raphael said, started coming to the King Celebration Service when I got elected Republican leader of the House, Georgia House, 28 years ago, or whenever that was, a long time ago. And I, I came because I thought I should, and then I came because I wanted to. And I came because my bladder could handle it. 
It is a long time to sit through, that's sure. But I come to tell you three things. One is chairman of the Veterans Committee in the Senate. As a veteran myself, how many veterans do we have in, in, in the congregation today? Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. For all of you who notice, that's more people proportionately that are in any other church that have served in the service. Less than 1% of the people who serve in our military today serve us, is protecting us. Less than 1%. And they're all volunteers. Think about that. The greatest of this country is in large measure because we can depend on them at any point, any time, any place, no matter what somebody does. And just yesterday, just yesterday in Pensacola, a terrorist killed an American airman there in his second year of training. Another wasteful, wasteful shooting on an institutional campus somewhere in our state. We've got to make sure that stuff stops. And I, as long as I have a breath in my body, whether I'm in elected office or not, I'm going to do everything I can to see to it that we get in violence in our schools, in violence in our shopping centers and our Walmarts and our churches and everything else. Taking a life is taking a gift from God to us, and we should never, ever... So, Robert, here is a Republican U.S. Senator standing with Raphael Warnock talking about veterans and military service, but the Republicans want to say Warnock is against the military. Well, well, two things. Putting that sermon in context, I'm actually at both of those uh, church services. I'm a member of, at Ebenezer. In the first video of Warnock, I'm in the second row all the way to the, on the left, all the way to the right in the pews. I will probably go back to church more often. Uh, but what we're seeing now is that Republicans have, have found a candidate that they have nothing to attack them on. Uh, they found somebody who's nearly squeaky clean, who's a, uh, who's really lives the life that uh, we want our pastors to live, and therefore they have to make up things to run against. The, uh, them on. The same thing that happened to President Obama, where you have to attack Jeremiah Wright's words, not his words, uh, actually. And this goes towards a continuous uh, battle and destruction um, that white evangelical Christians have launched against the black church. They only believe you should be Christian when you agree with them, when you're preaching the same word as them. You cannot share your own individual lived life experiences as Jeremiah Wright did or as other pastors have, and that's why they attack them. Meanwhile, Franklin Graham or Billy Graham or Pat Roberts can say whatever they feel like, and that's off limits. So let's understand what this is. It's an attack on the black church and the body of Christ within the black community. And I think that that has to be remembered on January the 4th, or more so on December 14th, when early voting starts, or even right now, when you can start requesting your absentee ballots, or all the way until December 7th, when you can uh, register to vote in Georgia. Because we cannot stand to have Republicans attacking the body of Christ in the name of Christianity itself, a Christianity which is profligate, which believes in uh, excessive spending, which believes in taking away social services from the poor, that believes that universal health care is somehow a bad thing that uh, pastors should be against. Let's understand what this battle is really about. You have somebody like Kelly Loeffler, who has the temerity, the audacity to make attacks against the ca character of Pastor Warnock, and nobody knows what she's done in her life besides marry a rich dude who bought her a Senate seat as a president. She has no history of politics. We don't know what her career was before this. All we know is that she married into a family to own the New York Stock Exchange, and they bought her a Senate seat. And you're trying to impugn the character of Pastor Warnock in this way. Y'all are lucky that I don't work on the Warnock uh, campaign team because all these nice commercials of him walking through a grocery store talking uh, about how much he loves dogs and puppies and eats pizza with a fork, it would be scorched earth it was, uh, if I was on that campaign because I do not believe it is appropriate and we allow people too long to get away with attacking the black church as a political punching bag, as if we, we mean nothing to our community. Those pastors preach the lived experiences of their communities and their congregations, and I don't see them showing the videos of Pastor Warnock with the Occupy Atlanta people ministering to the homeless, uh, his drug treatment ministry. I had a client once whose mother was convicted of a uh, crime she didn't commit and sentenced to 20 years. Pastor Warnock hopped on that immediately to help get that woman out of prison. That doesn't make the news, but but when you want to make up these attacks on the black church and then claim to be the party of Christianity, I, that is what the level of disgust that I think many of us have with the quote unquote evangelical movement and why we have to work overtime to get an actual man of God into uh, into uh, the Senate instead of these phony, fake, uh, circumspect, only conveniently Christians that are only Christian when it lines their pockets, they're ready to sell out stocks on coronavirus instead of dealing with the needs of the American people. 
the thing here, Lauren, again, their whole goal, you take a, a soundbite like that, 26 seconds, get circulated. I put Eric Erickson and Hugh, Hugh Hewitt on blast by saying, um, is there anything else to it? Y do y'all want to find that? But also find it interesting, Lauren. So let's attack Pastor Raphael Warnock's faith, but we can't say jack about Amy, Amy Coney Barrett's faith. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. It all <laughs> sort of throws back to the uh, radical, trying to radicalize black candidates. I mean, this has been going on forever, uh, really before the Southern strategy. It's the same old thing of trying to portray black candidates, particularly black male candidates, as somehow radical. And really, the, the, the whole goal here is, ooh, we're scaring white people. And we've seen it a million times. It was done to Reverend Jesse Jackson when he ran, obviously Obama. It's the same thing, the same playbook. And what the Republican Party seems to never figure out is that these are the types of ads that only appeal to the people who would vote against Warnock anyway. So it's all a big waste of time. Who are they going for? Are they going for swing voters? Well, if they're going for swing voters, that's not going to work. Everybody knows that Pastor Warnock pastors in the same church that Martin Luther King pastored in. That's not going to work with uh, progressives, white progressives in Atlanta. So these things are, are just thrown out there 26 seconds. And at some point, and I will help you find it, Roland, the, the entire sermon will be found. Because, of course, you can play this game all day, not only with the entire sermon, but, of course, with a million other sermons that Pastor Warnock has made, you can run 26 seconds of other things that are going to, of course, counter whatever that was. And, frankly, I didn't think that was a particularly jarring passage at all. But I'm sure that when we find what he said around it, it's going to put in a certain context and, and blow that all away. But this is what? desperation, because they cannot have the Senate be 50, 50. See, the, the, the bigger issue here is that the House is, is looking like the Democrats are barely over the majority at 221. They're barely at, at 218. And then if you have the Senate, of course, tied and, and Kamala having to sit up in the, you know, as the presiding officer, obviously it's president of the Senate to break that tie, this, this gets real. So these two Senate seats, this thing is obviously huge. So now they're going to go scorched earth they're going to go desperate, and they're dealing with Raphael Warnock, who there's nothing on. So, so we, we're going to reach the desperate hours pretty quickly here. The thing here that I find to be uh, hilarious is that you got folk like Marco Rubio, Scott, who loves to tweet out Bible verses. I mean, he... <laughs> and so uh, he sent this tweet, go to my iPad, not shocked Georgia Democrat Senate candidate Raphael Warnock See it, you cannot serve God and the military at the same time. These and even crazier things is what the radicals who control the Democratic Party's activists and small donor base believe. Now, here's how Mark Lamont Hill respond to him. Christians believe in the Bible. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters. Warnock is a minister who was pointing out that God must come first. Do you disagree with the Bible or the words of Jesus or just when Warnock says it? Exactly. Uh, I, I am exactly. so tired of politics of fear. And that uh, ad, I mean, I agree with my colleagues, but I'll be honest with you, we can go get the full text of his speech or his presentation, but it, it feels like, it feels defensive if you do that. You know, Raphael is a, is a man of God. Jeremiah Wright is a man of God. They, they're servant leaders. And when you attack them, you know, because of something they've said or because their love of their people, you know, it, it just rings hollow with those Democrats, those independents, black or white, as well as the black community uh, in regard to how important this election is. And the Republicans, you know, Lauren, you're right, they just operate in fear. They, they, they don't have anything else to operate in because the numbers are against them. And so uh, I think Raphael Warnock has got to stand on his own. He can defend himself no doubt about it. But remember, while it was close, Georgia uh, is, a, is a purple state. It's turned slightly blue, but it's going to turn all the way blue if we can mobilize these Democrats on who are running for Senate. It's all about the ground game now. I mean, they can run the ads and try to scare people, but whoever has the strongest ground game, they both have money, and mobilizing and getting people to the polls is going to make the difference. And right now, in my opinion, that's really all that matters. What is your ground game, Raphael and Ossoff? And, and, and can you motivate and can you get them to the polls? You just count them. Well, bottom, bottom line is well, this here. All I'm saying, Robert, 
I want to see black folks maximize the hell out of our numbers. I'm talking about uh, Stacey Abrams has already said some 600,000 Georgians have already requested, requested uh, their ballot by mail. I'm talking about black Georgia. Black Georgia, I'm talking about if you want to send a signal, if you want to tell them how y'all, what y'all trying to play this game with, Rep, with Reverend Jeremiah Wright and, uh, and these sermons, you hit them with so many votes, they gonna look up and say, oh my Lord, has there been an exodus? What's going on? That's how you respond to white Republican hate, Robert. Mm -hmm. Well, on that point, remember, I was at that sermon. What Pastor Warnock was saying, it replaced the word military with militarism, that you cannot serve both God and the God of militarism, that you cannot both serve God and a profligate uh, economy that does not care for the least of these. He was making very clear biblical points, and that's why they took it out of context. Even on the, the conversation about police officers, where they say he called police thugs. No, he calls the police officers who beat and kill people thugs. Not every exactly. police officer, the one bad apple. Now, we, know, now we all know that. That's but again, their, their goal, they know they dumb followers can't read. <laughs> oh, oh. But, but to, to that point, I think it's important to understand, look, the normally voter turnout for runoff elections in Georgia is 10 percent. So in this general election, there were right around 5 million votes uh, a cast split right down the middle. So if 500,000 people turn out for the runoff, that will be the uh, that will be right at average. Uh, with that, you only need 50 percent plus one to win. So we're talking about 250,000 plus one votes. We'll decide the, uh, the layout of the Senate. We'll decide the balance of power. We'll decide Medicare for all. We'll decide student loan reform. We'll de uh, decide defense spending and tax cuts and uh, and entitlement programs and Social Security and Medicare. All that will come down to 250,000 plus one people in Georgia. And then whenever someone tells you that they don't think their vote matters, understand how small of a number that is. And that's why it's important to support groups like NAACP under James Woodall in Georgia uh, who are working. They're sending out uh, absentee ballot request forms to every single person who voted in the general election. People like D. Dawkins Hagler and the Deltas down there who knocked on 200,000 doors uh, headed into the general election will do the same going into the runoff. People like NSA uh, and the New Georgia Project, uh, Latasha Brown and Black Voters Matter, we, and Rainbow Push Coalition, who's working with the incarcerated populations to do in-custody voting. We have so many people working this and understand that's why they are running these desperate ads. That's why they're taking things out of context and running. How many? If you're 18 years old voting in this election, you don't know who the hell Jeremiah Wright is. They are only playing to a certain subset of very old, elderly, conservative white voters and hoping that they will turn out. So all that black voices for Trump stuff that they were talking about six weeks ago, that's all gone. They're going directly back to a a ter attacking the body of Christ in the black church, attacking uh, black co the black community, and making sure that they push this messaging to scare old white people into believing that Pastor Warnock is some kind of black radical who hangs out Fidel Castro. This is the desperate play that they do to try to radicalize black men. We've seen this, everything from Dr. King, where they called him a communist, to run Jesse Run in 84 and 88, to Brock in 08, and now Warnock in 2020. Listen up, all my black... Look, I... Y'all, let me just try to be as clear as possible. Last comment on this story. I want to whoop they ass. I'm talking <laughs> about I want to whoop the ass of Leffler of Purdue. I want them to feel the pain and the agony of losing to Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. I want them to see, have to sit there and watch them votes come in from Gwinnett County and come in from <laughs> Fulton County and just hit mm. their ass like a hurricane has hit Georgia. And I want them to have to sit there and go, damn, how many black people did we piss off? That's the only way. Everybody who's listening to my voice, you should be telling every friend, frat brother, sorority sister, church member, nephew, niece, cousin, mama, daddy, aunt, friend, you name it, living in Georgia. I'm talking about when they had get your booties to the pole, when they had the folks, I don't give a damn if you love Magic City. I don't care if you love them hot wings. I'm talking about... You send a message to racists by throwing their ass out. And there's nothing better than those racists to have to stand there and watch a black man sworn in as the next United States senator. That's the only way you defeat them and you make them pay the price at the ballot box. That's how you do it.
to FocusSeat.com. Founded by Mary Spio, a sister, have these amazing uh, VR headsets. Allows for you to watch their content, the virtual reality content, uh, right here on the headset. You simply pop your phone right into here, close it up, and then you can we'll put yourself in the room watching their VR content on Seek.com or, of course, content that is on other platforms. And so you can check that out. They also have uh, these are 4D, 360 degree headphones right here uh, with tremendous bass that really distributes the sound all across your head. Uh, get, it's great, you can attach a headphone, um, a headset to it, so you can actually use it for gaming uh, and playing with you know, free hands. It's Bluetooth as well. So all of these, get one of these items, or you can subscribe to their content at Seek.com by going to Seek.com using this promo code is RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020. Uh, these, of course, could be some great headphones coming up for birthdays, Christmas, uh, you name it. And so if you want to do that, just go use the promo code right here, RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020, by going to seek.com. And we certainly appreciate them being a partner here with Roller Martin Unfiltered. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, let's talk about that race in Georgia. The uh, deadline to register is December 7th. December 7th in that particular race. The runoff will take place on January 5th. It will pit, of course, Pastor Raphael Warnock against uh, uh, incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler. And then, of course, you have uh, John Ossoff, who's challenging incumbent Republican David Perdue. Now, here's the deal. Early voting, no, December 14th. Now, already... Y'all, they starting to mess. Go to my iPad, Anthony. Uh, Kelly Leffler, she put out this tweet today. Uh, Reverend Warnock is a proud defender of Jeremiah Wright. Uh, he called police officers thugs and gangsters. He's anti-Israel, anti-Second Amendment, and sympathizes with Marxists too extreme for Georgia. Let me, first of all, you ought, to just hear, you ought to hear this nonsense. Watch this, y'all. Meet Raphael Warnock. He wants you to know he eats pizza with a fork and a knife. He once stepped on a crack in the sidewalk. But Georgians don't care about that. Georgians care that Raphael Warnock was a proud defender of anti-American, anti-Semitic pastor Jeremiah Wright, who suggested America deserved the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Not God bless America, God damn America! We celebrate uh, Reverend Wright Warnock said law enforcement officers are gangsters and thugs and a danger to children. He's anti-Israel, anti-Second Amendment, sympathizes with Marxists and socialists, and wants to make your neighborhoods less safe. Don't let him fool you with pizza and puppies. Raphael Warnock is too extreme for Georgia. Ooh, Robert. Ooh, Robert, the black guy is too extreme. Uh, he's too extreme for Georgia. This is the same Kelly Leffler uh, who trashed Black Lives Matter, uh, where her own, uh, she owns the co-owns WNBA team. Her own players basically told her to go to hell. Uh, how do you think that's going to play with black voters and white voters in Georgia? Well, I, I think that commercial, you know, that was written directly from the 2008 uh, anti-Obama playbook. I think it was literally word for word uh, what a uh, John McCain ad said back then uh, uh, with regards to Jeremiah Wright and Marxism and extremism. This is not going to work. <laughs> uh, let's, let's understand that it was if it was not a jungle primary um, on uh, November the 5th, President, uh, uh, Pastor Warnock, who's my pastor at Ebenezer, uh, would have won straight out. Uh, if it's, uh, In Georgia, the during the jungle primary, the names are listed in alpha Political order, Warnock being at the end, even being at the end of a list of about 20 candidates, Warnock got the most votes of anybody in that uh, in that uh, jungle primary. So what we're going um, uh, in addition to that, another benefit coming on January 5th is that the Secretary of State today announced that the other uh, statewide uh, statewide runoffs will also be on fe January the 5th instead of December the 1st. So that means my friend J uh, Daniel Blackman, who's running for Public Service Commissioner, will be on, J on January the 5th now, as well as the runoff between. 
between uh, Howard Franklin and um, and Kwanzaa Hall for the unexpired for the remainder of John Lewis's term. So by moving those to January the fifth, that means we're going to have enormous uh, turnout in Atlanta for both that congressional seat for John Lewis, which uh, which will have uh, former city council uh, men uh, Kwanzaa Hall uh, uh, campaigning for, as well as Howard Franklin and the P public service commission race. Normally in a runoff election, you get about ten percent voter turnout compared to the uh, to the general election. We're going to have several times that number because of the interest in this race, the amount of money that's going to be spent in this race. And there's a very good chance that Pastor Warnock will uh, win his race versus Leffler, who is a political neophyte, who has the issues with selling off stock and being in coronavirus, who said that she is the most pro-Trump senator that there is in order to beat Doug Collins in that crazy primary that they're running against each other in. Um, and also who's um, been disowned by the WNBA and who has uh, ties to Wall Street because her husband and owns the New York Stock Exchange. So Pastor Warnock has an outstanding chance where we have to push those turnout numbers on January the 5th. We have um, voter registration all the way up until December 7th. Early voting starts to December 14th. You have the opportunity to request your absentee ballot right now in Georgia. Uh, you have to get your absentee ballot application. Then they send you the ballot. Then you can send the um, ballot in. It's a three-part convoluted process. But, the, uh, but the, with, the, with that in place, if you have the same early voting numbers that we got for the general election, then more than likely Pastor Warnock will win, and by extension, John Ossoff will have the opportunity to win also. Um, and that is that this is one of the things that Stacey um, uh, Abrams put out here. She said if you're a college student registered to vote uh, in Georgia, you can actually request your ballot uh, at ballotrequest.sos.ga.gov. You can also, uh, if you have any questions, call the Voter Protection Hotline at 888 730 5816. And so that's one of the things that she put out there as well. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that to me, that, that's interesting to me, um, uh, Scott, is, again, you, you, you're seeing, so Tom, Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas, Senator Marco Rubio, they picked up on uh, what Kelly Leffler is putting out there. And I'm just sitting here saying, all right, I mean, y'all can try to use Reverend Wright and you could, I mean... <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out, Kelly Leffler, you're trying to say that a pastor at Ebenezer is anti-Israel. He probably can give you a lesson on the Bible. Exactly. And, and, the, uh, and the, um, <laughs> the, the Quran and uh, the, the, the other uh, the Torah. book, the, the, the Torah, forgive me. But, but, but wait a minute, guy. You know, Roland, I'm a little disappointed in your intro on this because it Karen Lovler, the one who's been endorsed by QAnon and the QAnon <laughs> and their racists and their call for violence, that the Congresswoman, I believe from Alabama or or Georgia, campaigned with Kelly Loeffler in order in you know, this race that is turned into a runoff. Is this the same Kelly Loeffler you're telling me about on top of the WNBA and her team rejecting her? We ain't talked about that. So the goal of her to, to suggest that Jeremiah Wright, one of the greatest preachers of our time, or in history, if you will, regardless of whether you believe in what he's, he preaches or doesn't, but, but QAnon? Oh, and by the way, there are a lot of white people on the front lines with Black Lives Matter uh, uh, demanding and protesting the police who act like thugs, if you will, and criminals. Let's just call them what it is. They may not all be that. But I also think that if you tolerate that on your police force, you are just as liable. That's another discussion. But let's not forget the cool, the QAnon or whatever you call it, that is this mythical conspiracy of deep state and racism and calls for violence against people. That's who she not only has embraced, but they've endorsed her as well, and she's campaigned with their representative. Enough said as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Rena, go ahead. And this is the same Kelly Loeffler that in March of this year was she and three uh, two other members of Congress and their advisors sold hundreds of thousands of dollars in stock after attending a closed door briefing about the coronavirus. That's the same <laughs> Kelly Loeffler. This woman. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> I mean, 
Oh, and, and, and okay, no surprise, the Justice Department in May of this year closed the investigation into all three of those senators for those stock trades they made, uh, you know, when the coronavirus was causing market turmoil. But these guys got the tip. So the fact that this woman is a U.S. senator just disgusts me. I mean, she's just ridiculous on every level, number one. Um, the imagery, I mean, I guess it re resonates with some people, but she is just so... She is so non-representative of the American woman. And so I actually, I'm not surprised that she, she got involved in insider trading like that because she's probably like, what? This is just business as usual. So anyways, uh, that's how I feel about Kelly Loeffler. <laughs> but we should look at the facts here. And in Georgia, it's it's not great facts, but but there's a silver lining. The Senate, election, Senate elections are usually likely to turn out more Republicans there, and that's based on past election data. Uh, now, we know, though, the African-American voter turnout in the general election was historically high in Georgia this year. And I think that's what's going to motivate African-Americans again. We've got to be real about this. Georgia, whites in Georgia, more likely to be Republican when they're affluent and white. They are more likely to be Republican and more likely to, to turn out for runoffs. We've got to combat that. I'm very proud of what happened in the general. I think Stacey Abrams deserves, man, medal upon medal, but the work is not finished. This has already felt like the endless election. And even though all of us agree and know that it's fact that Joe Biden has won, this was something I was a bit afraid of, is that the Trump campaign and his lawyers want to prolong this thing. So I, I don't know if uh, Scott can can offer any input here as an attorney, but I, my sense is that this whole hand recount thing, which is really an audit, it doesn't matter, it's just verbiage uh, at this point, but, but I think Trump and his people think it could be to their benefit because it kind of puts off certifying electors could it lead us to a situation where Georgia legislature certifies electors in Trump's favor? Is that kind of the end game here? So I haven't had a chance really to investigate that today, and I apologize to the audience that I have not. But but I don't know if uh, Scott could shed any light on that. Well, anything's possible with this Republican Party. Let me say this. The second prong to any audit or recount has to do with, is it going to change the outcome of the election? Even if you had electors from Georgia who, who would come and then create an issue for the U.S. Senate to determine who to certify, the Trump electors or the state legislature electors, Georgia state legislature electors, or the Biden, um, the winner of uh, Biden electors, if it doesn't make a difference or it doesn't change the outcome, uh, that's the second prong of any test on these audits or these runoffs. So I still don't think so. They still have to put up or shut up. And so uh, the Georgia race, uh, going back to the Georgia race, let me just say this real quick. This higher turnout that we're going to have in this special election because of the money and how, what's at stake at the Senate, I think it helps also more than it would help, than it helps, ironically, uh, Warnock. Because Warnock and, and his race has all the celebrity and money and, and media attention, but also barely forced to run off. And now with this heightened scrutiny on it, right, I think he's going to be the surprise that he's going to be Senator Purdue. We'll have to see. But, um, Roland, what do you think about that theory? Well, um, eh, uh, I think really what you're dealing with here is that um, I the only way there's going to be a heightened... Uh, turnout is if the ground game is put into place. Typically, mm -hmm. there's a dramatic drop-off when it comes to runoff races. Uh, so what has to happen is there has to be this, this really focus. Republicans have already announced that they're going to send Mike Pence to Georgia. Personally, uh, I don't think uh, Donald Trump's ego uh, will allow him to sit in the White House. I think he is going to go to Georgia. I think, I think and you're already seeing this. I believe that uh, Fair Fight, Stacey Abrams' group, I believe uh, you're going to see Black Voters Matter. You're going to see Until Freedom. Uh, I know a number of groups who are already focused. Uh, I can tell folks, uh, you know, we are going to be uh, focused there as well. I mean, I'm literally sitting here uh, looking at uh, a house that our team can rent for the entire month for five weeks. Uh, we plan on having multiple crews. 
uh, who are going to be uh, in Georgia as well. We want to be in those places uh, such as uh, Albany. We want to be in Savannah. We want to certainly be in Atlanta. Uh, want to be in Fort Valley. We, we, you know, our plan is to go to those places where black voters are, uh, talk to them. And so that's one of the things that we're doing. So I, that's going to be intense focus. But this runoff is going to be, you, they could talk all day about money. They could talk all day about blanketing with TV ads and radio ads. This is all about ground game, Robert. And, and, if, well, and, and if you're the DCCC, if you're, I'm sorry, you're the D, DSCC, you're, you're the Democrats, this, it has to be about ground game, ground game, ground game. You have to look at the last election, you have to look at runoff and say, what do I anticipate there being a drop in terms of turnout and then, and then how can we get our people out? That's, that, that's how they're going to have to win this race. You're absolutely right, Roland. Back in 2010, I was the field director for Ken Hodges, who was the candidate for attorney general in Georgia. Uh, and we had a 159 county strategy where we had either a church or a supporter in every single county in the state of Georgia. We hit the ground hard uh, while I think Roy Barnes was running for governor that year, hit the airwaves hard uh, with commercials. We got more votes from the third spot, uh, from the attorney general's uh, spot, than Roy Barnes got for governor or that the person who was running for lieutenant governor got from the lieutenant governor's seat. Georgia is all about ground game and knowing where to go, when to go, and how to get there. Even in the deepest red Confederate flag, MAGA country part of Georgia, there are black families, black churches, um, um, uh, Hispanic uh, populations that can be reached out to and touched and that many people forget to, um, to get out of there. You cannot just campaign in Atlanta and think you're going to win an election in Georgia. Once you cross 285, you're in a completely different state. And if you do not understand that territory and how to campaign there, then you're not going to be able to win. And one of the problems that Democrats often have in Georgia in the South in general, they'll get a race like this that's close, where you have a runoff, where you have a chance to win. And, and instead of talking to <clears throat> Sorry, instead of talking to, you know, Fred Hicks or talking to uh, some of the political strategists who are from there, they'll bring in people from D.C. and New York and California to try to run a, uh, a, a poll tested and focus group certified campaign. And those always lose. You have to hit that ground running. And it's important to have a message that's going to turn out your base. Runoffs are about turning your base out, not about persuading new voters. Right. So instead of trying to find that 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 one swing voter who used to who voted in the, in the 1984 election, election uh, for uh, Walter Mondale, see if you could bring him back to the Democratic Party, you need to be hitting these communities in Columbus and Albany, uh, Augusta, Macon, Statesboro, uh, Rome, Georgia, Carrollton, Athens, all around the state where you have minority populations that vote 90 percent for Democrat, and making sure you get them to the polls. Buses, churches sold to the poll, uh, early voting matters. And we, and we have those sorts of turnout numbers. That's how you win a race in the state of Georgia. Yeah. That's what, it, you know, what, what it's going to boil down to, Reno. What, how do you see Republicans uh, playing this race? Um, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, both sides know how critically important these two are. Democrats, excuse me, Republicans right now have a 49-48 advantage. They won the seat uh, in Alaska. If they win these, these two seats, they'll be 51-48. If they win one, 51-49. Democrats need both to force a tie with Senator Com with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris being the tiebreaker, which means they will control the chamber. And so how will Republicans uh, try to go after uh, these two seats? Well, I think it's going to be a everything in the kitchen sink sort of effort because the reality is is that Joe Biden is up 14,000 votes, right? And that's where we're at. That's truth. Uh, and that's in Georgia. So there's a lot of uh, disgruntlement right now amongst GOP operatives down there of sort of like, how do we get here? But I also know how we got there. I look at, uh, okay, well, let me let me be clear here. I have, I've looked at some exit polling. I don't really trust exit polling um, fully. And I think all of it needs to be taken with a grain of salt right now until we have complete totals everywhere. So I will say this. I think uh, obviously GOP operatives are fretting. Ossoff is a sort of known quantity. Warnock is not, politically speaking. Ossoff having run before but uh, I think uh, the wild card here, I think, is, is is Warnock. And I've already started to see on the right uh, the, the stories come up. And I was not aware, for example, that uh, Reverend Warnock and his wife are divorced and they'd had a domestic dispute as he was preparing for his Senate run. It, it, uh, it, well, no, that, that was an alleged domestic dispute. It was an actually it went nowhere. 
Okay. So yeah, she, she alleged that she alleged that, that he drove <laughs> over her. She alleged he he drove over her foot. That's right. It, it went nowhere. Oh, that's good to know. So, so but I, I mention it only because I was not aware of it previously. I saw the Atlanta Journal Constitution covered it way back in March or whenever it happened earlier this year, and then they got divorced. What a few months later, I I didn't even know he was married or single, whatever. But I'm seeing this headline popping up again, and I know that the GOP has a problem with what white suburban women who are around my age in in their mid 30s, particularly because we have young children. We've gone to liberal colleges mainly. We've come back and lived in the suburbs of Georgia. This is a reality is that this disinformation campaign or making Warnock seem out to be like a an angry guy who runs over somebody's foot just because, uh, it's coming out because they want to question sort of his fitness for office. And I think that's what they're trying to put in the minds of these younger white suburban women is like, hey, you might be good with Joe Biden because he reminds you of your very uh, sweet uncle who, you know, is from a nice era and very statesmanlike. And, and look, I've been so impressed by Joe Biden and how he's been handling this Donald Trump concession stuff. But but are you you know what they're trying to to sow doubt with, uh, which is rich of them, uh, is is sort of are you good with this this black man who you don't know much and hasn't really been in the in the light uh, that we all know much. He's been you know part of Ebenezer, but do you really know him? Do you know he was involved in this? So that's what I see kind of happening right now, and and I think operatives are going to get really really nasty in the next few weeks. So so we all have to be really alert as to what is truth. And uh, yeah, what's fiction? Uh, look, well, it, the no security in all this though, is it, uh, Roland? Go ahead. I mean, it, it, there are no there are no character purity tests. Each of these four candidates have their either political or personal flaws. So what? I mean, Donald Trump's not going to be on the ballot down there. Uh, Loeffler and Warren are going to be on the ballot. And you want to compare characters? I'll take the minister's character over Karen uh, or Loeffler's any time if they want to get into that dirty kind of smacking match, if you will. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be a big issue. I understand the GOP strategy, but Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have got to get down to Georgia. Uh, the whole personality piece, it may be relevant, but it's not going to be dispositive because the Senate... And who controls the Senate is going to be on the ballot down there. And I think that's what's going to turn out or going to drive that turnout. This is a national race, even though it's in Georgia. And so we'll certainly have to see. Again, I say it's going to help also because of the national attention and the money going in there right now. But getting people to the polls, getting them to the polls on Election Day or before Election Day, if there's early voting, is going to be key. And whoever... Ex executes that the best are going to win these one or two races. Uh, look, I think that, uh, look, it's going to be an enormous amount of money uh, when, um, you know, Nancy Pelosi spoke out about, you know, how the candidates run there in Georgia. I was like, you know what, uh, let, let the folks in Georgia figure it out. And then, and to your point, Robert, that is exactly it. Frankly, why consultants coming out of D.C. can't come into Georgia to say, hey, this is how you win Georgia? That's not going to do it. Hey, the people in yeah, Georgia, the people in Georgia know best uh, in terms of if you look at Warnock and Ossoff, because I'm, I'm quite sure they are going through that and they're looking at the numbers. They're they're looking at precincts. They're looking at who voted, who didn't. Somebody floated this story today that 95,000 people voted uh, for Biden, didn't vote for anybody else. I'm sure people are like, okay, where you know where are those votes? Because this is going to be a close, close race and margins are going to matter. Which is why if black intensity, if black turnout intensity is at a high rate, that can very well offset what is happening other places. You're absolutely right, Roland. I cannot implore the party enough. A half billion dollars on both sides of the aisle is going to be spent in this race in the next 60 days uh, or so. So it's crucially important to hire black consultants on the ground. Hire local consultants in your local region. Don't simply think you're going to hire a kid from Emory or somebody from Gwinnett County and send them down to Brunswick, Georgia to do door-to-door -door campaigning. It's not going to work. Work with the local organizations. Put street money out there. Uh, the black church is alive and well as a motivator of people to vote in this uh, in this state. Make sure that you have somebody who can connect you with those ministries and get out there on the ground. Uh, do not sit up in Buckhead thinking your 
are campaigning to the state. Do not lose this race as we've seen happening so um, before. And don't try to bring out-of-state issues to Georgia and think you're going to campaign on them. I've seen um, where they'll bring something which is popular in California and think that you're going to win a district attorney race in, uh, in Telfair County with it. It simply put does not work. So is the local touch is crucially important and that ground game and that effort. Don't just run commercials on uh, cable, um, cable news and think you're going to win. You have to put money into black radio. Um, I don't care if it's a podcast or talking on somebody's iPhone who has 100,000 Instagram followers. You have to get out there and touch people where they are and make sure that you are beating the bushes to turn out your vote. Don't do this whole song and dance where you try to convert the Reagan Democrats back to the party. This is not the time for that. 10% of people who vote in general elections usually vote and runoffs. You got to get that closer to 15 or 20 percent on the Democratic side if you hope to win. And I think that one of the things that one, well, I think one of the things they're also going to have to do is, and again, this is, look, I, this is one of the hardest things, I think, for these campaigns uh, to, frankly, to understand black people. What often happens is they'll say, well, you know, we're, we're going to focus our money uh, just on the, uh, on the media outlets there in Georgia. Mm, we're a little bit different in that in that our people are communicating with our people in Georgia. We're communicating with HBCU students. And so when you support this show, when you support uh, syndicated black radio, you're also hitting those particular places because we are reaching out uh, to our folks there as well. And I think that's one of the things that uh, these campaigns don't quite understand about African-Americans in terms of the role that black media plays in terms of being able to drop information to, play, to places like that. You're absolutely right. And so if you're not advertising on black radio or black television, black media, if you're not working with all the organizations, you know, we have conference calls each week with uh, Rainbow Push, Urban League, NAACP, Fair Fight, um, NSA's group, uh, New Georgia Project. Uh, so many people who are organizing on the ground uh, and who are working to get these people out and who have been working on these things for years. You know, you don't have a blue Georgia without he Helen Butler. You don't have a blue Georgia without Rita Samuel. You don't have a blue Georgia uh, without Janice Mathis. Those those are people who have been beating the, uh, who have been fighting these fights long before people even knew there was a fight to jump into. And you have to support those those organizations. Uh, don't just go national, go granular, and make sure you're talking to people where they are. Those are the folks who are going to win this election. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, at Seek.com, I want to thank you for being a partner with Roland Martin Unfiltered, Mary Spiel, the founder of Biz Black Owned Virtual Reality Company. You can watch their content at Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. This is one of the headsets that you can use. It's virtual reality headset. Drop your phone right into here. Look at that content, that VR content on their site. Other 360-degree video uh, puts you right uh, right there up close. And so you just pop it on like this, and then you're able literally to just sit here and put yourself in the room and see everything that's around you 360 degrees. Now, uh, if you listen to music, folks, you can check out the music uh, on their uh, Seek.com headphones. These right here, folks, are 360-degree 4D headphones. The bass on these things are absolutely amazing. Surround sound. So literally, when you're listening to it, the sound actually is around uh, your whole head again. Created by a system. Uh, if you want to uh, get uh, the headset uh, the, uh, for the uh, music or the VR headset, uh, simply use this promo code RMVIP2020. RMVIP2020. Christmas is coming up. Great, some great gifts. Matter of fact, my birthday in nine days. So I'm just, just, just giving y'all a hint. Uh, so use the promo code RMVIP2020 uh, and go to seek.com. And again, we appreciate them being partners with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, earlier today, we also caught up with uh, the folks with Untell Freedom. Uh, they were out in these streets in Atlanta. It was uh, very chilly in Atlanta today. 
Uh, 45 degrees overcast. That wind was blowing 20 miles an hour, so it felt more like it was in uh, low to mid-30s. But that did not stop Tamika Mallory, Linda Sarsour, my son, and others from being out here and encouraging people. First of all, checking people's registration, talking to them about the power and impact of voting. And so uh, here is that. You know, we at Until Freedom like to work with low propensity voters. Got, That's what they are called. We believe that they're actually high propensity voters if properly engaged. And so we're out in the communities where you obviously, if you look around, you don't see many people out here right. with those big budgets right. registering folks. But we're out here making sure we've already registered a few people, making sure folks know about the runoff, understand why they need to show up at the polls, and just engaging our folks. Right, so, so one of your folks there, so what she's doing yeah, right he's, now, he's uh... He's working, this young lady says she needed to check her registration. She wants to make sure her registration is still in place. And he's helping her right now, using his smartphone to um, check her voter registration. So, uh, so y'all, so how long have y'all been here? So we've been, this is our second week in Georgia, but we've actually been, um, you know, throughout the entire election process on the road across the country. Hold on so, a second. Hey, y'all ready to vote? Yeah. Y'all good? good? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah. All right, cool. All right, just checking. Yeah, no, they, um, a lot of the younger people are registered. That's what we're finding. Black women are very receptive. They need, they want the information if they don't have it. It's black men where we struggle the most and we have to have the most conversations. Um, you know, and my son spends a lot of time talking to the folks in, you know, our generation right, right. and really trying to help them understand because they are, they have been sucked into the narrative around Trump being, um, you know, a better choice for us or even if a worse choice. But we need to keep somebody who's, you know, going to keep us engaged and somebody that will make us mad so we can do the work. And that's obviously a narrative that is extremely dangerous for our community. So he spends time out here debating with everybody and really getting into it. And that's what we do, you know, just having presence out here. We believe that one of the most important things is to make sure that our people feel loved and engaged so that they don't feel like we're just saying, oh, you know, y'all are not voting and we're frustrated with, you know, we understand that there's a lot of trauma. People feel hopeless. And so we have to actually bring them in and make them feel important. Well, the point you made about, um, in terms of what these black men are, um, look, in, in the 2012, I kept telling everybody, there was a nine point gap between black men and black women for Obama and Romney. Right. It went to 13 for Trump, then it went to 20 this year. I kept telling people, look, when you saw nine and 12, that was with it because there were a lot of black men who felt that Obama didn't do enough. Right. I said, y'all, that thing is real. Right. You can argue all day, right. but you better have a plan to deal with that because that then impacts everything that goes below the presidential race. So U.S. Senate, congressional races, um, DA races, whatever. <clears throat> so the target has to be directly to black men. I think a lot of people don't yeah. focus on that. And then there's been so much intensity about black women, black women, black women, that my deal is like, no, you gotta have specific messaging. Absolutely, for black men. So y'all, so y'all. And we've been spending time like going <coughs> to the strip clubs, catching brothers before they get in. You know, not after they come out, cause that, it don't work. It don't work <laughs> after they come out. But before they go in, so we've been at, in Georgia specifically last weekend, we went to some of the hottest clubs, the areas where everybody was out. It was warmer, lots of people out. And we specifically focused on black men you know, stopping them and talking so, so to them. So when the people got mad at the sisters who put that put that video together, take their booty to the pole. Yeah. A lot of people were like, oh my God, this is offensive. This is demeaning to black yeah. people. But they were like, look, we gonna get folks no matter where they Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, they, that's what they do every day. So why not use where you are? Right. They said, use what's in your hand. That right. Use, and that's, those are their people. That's their demographic. And so they stood and they talked with those people in the language that they understand. If it's not for you, don't listen to it. And for us, a lot of people say, you going to strip clubs? Absolutely. Those people have families. They pay taxes, some of them. They, uh, they, go, to, they go to school. They have their children in school. They buy groceries. People been shopping? Okay. Oh, some, <laughs> some better stocks. <laughs> so, so my son, I was, just talk, I was just talking to uh, uh, Tamika about
um, the, with the discussions you've been having, and she said you've been having debates with a lot of these brothers trying to get them to understand. Let's talk about that. What, what you had, what you had to do, and how much extra you had to put into it to get them to understand why they got to get registered and vote. Well, you know, first, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge that I understand. Right. You know, black men have do dealing with so much different trauma. We have trust issues, and, and rightfully so. You know, this system has never really done anything to rectify things that we've gone through through our history. We're overly incarcerated, killed. We, we're dealing with a lot of different issues. So when you're telling them to vote for a system that they've never really seen change, it really, it triggers them. But what I explain to them is that, listen, regardless of what you think is going on, there are consequences for doing nothing. Right. You know, we if we sit there and we allow these people to continue to move, we looked at Trump's presidency and we realized he was moving towards, you know, where he was going to be a dictator. We were, he was moving towards dictatorship. We watched him roll back That's right. laws. He was putting in um, different judges. Look, look, right now, he only got 40 some odd days. He's trying to put to death five people and several African-American okay. just for the hell of it. They are literally, they, they are literally racing to execute folk before he gets out because he got the power to do so right now. Right. That, that's literally what they're yeah, doing. And, that, and when you talk about that, that's evil. It's, it's, a, it's a white supremacist uh, mind state that has kept us enslaved, that has utilized the 13th Amendment against right. us. And he was focused on really putting in policy and putting in place something that will completely roll back our civil rights. So to acknowledge that and then acknowledge we can acknowledge what happened with Joe Biden. We can acknowledge the crime laws. We can acknowledge the crap. Where those things actually happen. Right. So I'm not I'm not mad at you when you talk about that, but I'm talking about imminent danger. When we're dealing with imminent danger, you know, I understand the, the you know, I understand the pushback, I understand the pain that we're dealing with. But when we look at it's not the lesser two evils, it's just voting for a better opponent. But that also that also it was 1994. Exactly. This is 20, 20 years ago. So, so the thing now is, to me, the thing now is, in terms of where we are, if you got this race right here, Old South Warnock wins, it's a 50-50 tie. The reality is, what I keep telling them is, the George Floyd Justice Act passed by the House can now get signed into law if Old South and Warnock win okay. and the Dems hold their deal. If they don't win, there's no chance it gets passed. Exactly. So those are things that I tell them too, is that we understand the reality of what we're dealing with. So you have to be involved in the process. You have to understand. We know, we realize what this administration did give us nothing. We've seen them take away our civil rights. We've literally seen them take away our rights. So we got to do something different. That's my model. Like we need something different. So the more that we put these people in a position to actually be able to make change, we still going to fight them every day. We with them every day. We're gonna be on them to make sure that they hold to the end of the bargain. But we know that we got a better chance of winning with this administration than we have before. Uh, last night, y'all were all gathered. Y'all were uh, live tweeting mm -hmm. uh, the debate last night. Get over here, Landa. Y'all were all live tweeting uh, debate last night, uh, and uh, just uh, how crazy is it what you heard last night from the robot Kelly left? Oh man! You mean the Nazi Barbie? I mean, this lady is outrageous. Really. She really is outrageous. And people only heard like probably one hundredth of the type of bigotry that she has. I mean, she was using dog whistles all night. She doesn't know what socialism is. She has no idea what Marxism is. She's just using buzzwords to instill fear in people. And the idea that she kept on calling uh, Warnock the radical liberal, the whole radical, entire radical, ra radical, 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 radical liberal, liberal Warnock. Wow. First of all, there's no such thing as a radical liberal. That was all, you know that. all poll tested. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And she just kept on with her messaging. So you, we also have to, we had a debate about this yesterday, Roland, that she's doing her job because she is appealing to her base. Right. And she's talking to her people, right? We always have to water down what we're saying because we want to try to appeal to people she's trying to appeal with and right. bring them over to our side instead of saying, let's expand our people. Right. She didn't. She didn't water down nothing of what she was saying. Right. She, she, she was. She was. She was fired up last yeah, night. Even as a robot, she was a fired up robot. So I don't know. I. I, I just want people to know that we're going to still fight, but we need these two Senate seats. So regardless of how you felt that Raphael Warnock did last night, Georgia, we need you in these streets. We need you at the polling sites. 
I know Reverend Warnock. I went to seminary with him. Um, we're in a, 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 fe a interfaith fellowship together. He's an incredible human being who truly believes in dignity and human rights for all people. And he, he's going to be a great senator for sure. People, I, I had to explain to people one of the reasons why he, he can't go hard, when we got to be right. honest, right. when you're a black man running against a white woman oh, yeah, that's, that's in Georgia, he, he has to walk a very fine line, which is why I think his commercial looked yeah. the way they look, and that's what happened. Yeah, so no, I'm trying to, I, she tried to bait him a few times too, because she said, "I don't want to be, I don't need to be lectured by you." Uh, so uh, she was trying to get into that that, yeah, that, that kind of dynamic. Yeah. 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 There you go. Now, what, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what he would have said is, "What you need is a Bible study." Right. Uh, but that would have been great. Well, I gotta ask you this here. Yes. Um, everybody can see you. This is true. It's yeah. pretty bright. You want everybody to know. <laughs> What we out here doing? Precisely. Today's the last day to register to vote. It's important for Georgia yeah, to get he out. Did, he did this for you, Roland. That's part of your That's uh, right. logo. I mean, he, Listen, I mean you, you, you like, you. hey, hey, you like cloud, you rain, y'all gonna see me. Listen, orange is a powerful color. <laughs> That's right. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I really hope that the, because first of all, Osaf and Warnock are really campaigning together. I really hope they utilize what took place uh, with this restaurant, Slutty Vegan, as an example of how David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler really don't give a damn about black businesses. So, uh, John Ossoff, over the weekend, Saturday was supporting small businesses, and so that was called uh, Small Business Saturday, okay? So it was about tiling small businesses. So John Ossoff decides to visit a black-owned vegan restaurant in Atlanta. Here's the video of him visiting there. It's called Slutty Vegan. Well, roll the video, please. So here's the deal. He's in line. You see him standing right there. And so he's, you know, long line there. And so supporting small businesses. All right. So the deal is this here. The Purdue campaign, they decide, they decide to sit here and, oh, get an attitude. Here's the tweet that they put up. All right. We're going to show you the tweet that they put up uh, attacking Osof. Osof can have the plant burger. We'll take the all-star special. Pick your side, Georgia. So what are they saying? Like the hell with this black owned business? Is that what they're saying? Well, let's actually talk to uh, the owners of that particular business. They join us right now. Uh, and I'm sure this was not what they were uh, hoping folks would talk about. But guess what? Uh, all publicity is a good publicity when, you, when you're owning your own business. So, <laughs> so joining us uh, uh, right now uh, with uh, Slutty Vegan uh, are uh, the two owners uh, who are with us uh, right here. And I'm trying to uh, pull up uh, th their names. Uh, I'm going to pull it right here. Uh, don't have it there in my prompter. Uh, so let me go. Uh, Pinky Cole. Pinky, how you doing? Pinky, you there? I'm here. How are you? All right, Pinky. So um, let's just say uh, this was not where you wanted to be. Did, did, did you get a sense that what, what David Perdue in his campaign was saying is uh, the hell with your business. Forget a business like yours. Uh, we only support places where there's beef trying to attack him. To me, you're attacking a black owned business. A small well, business. You know, the interesting part here is if you've never been to Slutty Vegan, one thing you're going to hear about Slutty Vegan is we get a lot of support from the community. 
right? We do a lot in the community, so people really have our back. So when you mess with Slutty Vegan, you mess with the city of Atlanta. So when Purdue said what he said, a lot of people took it personal. A lot of people, we, we've contributed almost $500,000 in community initiatives through our organization and through the business alone. So we don't just serve burgers and fries. So for us off to come and support a black business that's a pillar in the community, it meant more than him just standing in line saying, I want to get a dance hall queen. It meant I'm going to support a business that uplifts the community and utilizes their resources and their platforms to lead and to bring people up with them. And people didn't like what Purdue said. I actually laughed. I got to be honest. You know why? because I'm a former television producer, right? So I'm going to take all the press that I can get for my business. And what that did is it provided me a 15% increase in business. So thank you, Purdue. And, and, <laughs> and, and what, he, what he didn't realize is that the people who didn't know anything about John Ossoff knew a lot more about him through the avenue of Slutty Vegan. So I'm glad that he was able to get the exposure that he was probably looking for. And I'm glad that Slutty Vegan did, too. So, you know, it's a win-win for the both of us. Well, in fact, uh, during the uh, there were, there were 100,000 people in the Atlanta metro area who voted for Biden who skipped the Ossoff Purdue race. Uh, Many people believe that if those folks had actually voted for Ossoff or voted for Biden, Ossoff would have beaten David Perdue uh, in, in the primary there. And so I've talked to people in Atlanta who said Ossoff really needs to do better to uh, get black folks to know who he is. And so Perdue attacking Ossoff for visiting your restaurant, uh, to your point, and I've heard this from other people, it's ticked a lot of people off uh, in Atlanta and it has black folks like, oh! <laughs> Oh, now y'all want to mess with the black restaurant. We, and so when he says, pick your side, Georgia, that's black yeah. people clearly are saying, we're we going to pick our side, Osop over Purdue. Yeah, listen, the reality of it is, is this. A, a lot of people still don't know who John Ossoff is, right? He, he could have won the election last time, but, you know, people weren't familiar with who he is. And, and, and let's be honest, right? getting black people familiar a second go round to even vote for a runoff election is hard enough, right? So what you got to do to get people to pay attention? You got to do it in the most unconventional way. So if it was me, and I like to call myself a hood politician, if I'm going to get people to vote for me, I'm going to go through the most unconventional avenues to get people to, one, know my name, to know what I stand for, and to know what I represent. And it's going to be beyond a campaign because, listen, you got to meet the people where they at. You got to let people know who you are and what you represent. And I think that, you know, I actually commend John also for coming to one of the hottest concepts in the country that so happens to be in Atlanta to do that. So it's like if Slutty Vegan like you, everybody like you, you're good to go. So I think that a lot more people, especially black people, got a lot more familiar with John also over the weekend. Um, and Purdue, I think he should retract his statement because it didn't make him look too good. This was a photo that John Osa put on his Twitter feed, uh, the two of you. Uh, and he said uh, in his tweet, uh, yeah, y'all, I'm going around Atlanta for hashtag small business Saturday. First stop at a slutty vegan ATL. Um, as a result of this, uh, of course, the uh, last day to register is Monday uh, there in Georgia. Uh, and so uh, do you think that uh, as a result of this, uh, first of all, are y'all doing anything uh, particular in the restaurant when it comes to getting people to register to vote for this uh, uh, runoff on January 5th? Absolutely. So, you know, we, we've already started. We did, we've done an initiative with Impossible Foods and Jermaine Dupree. Actually, you were a speaker on one of those events where we got people excited about voting and the voting process. Oh, yeah. One of the virtual uh, one of the virtual yeah. events. Yep. Absolutely. So we were specifically targeting people who weren't interested in voting. And, you know, I got to be honest, prior to me being a business owner, I, I wasn't into politics and I'm getting to learn more about politics. But I wanted to use my platform because I know a lot of people watch the business to get people excited about the election. So after Vote Nick, we have still continued to partner with organizations to get people excited. We're actually working on um, some fundamental organizations so that we can drive more people to the polls. I've been doing a lot of speaking engagements because people already know how serious this election is. This runoff is just as important as the first one, right? We did a rally with All Stuff and Warnock um, in Clayton County at uh, my second location in Jonesboro, and we had Common come out and support. So literally, whatever I have to do to get people who look like me more interested in this runoff election, I'm willing to do that. So we've never wavered. We've been consistent on that. And, you know, we got people getting registered to vote when they stand in line. We get over 500, single pe 500 people who stand in line every single day to come to Slutty Vegan. So we utilize that to the best of our ability by getting people registered to vote, getting people in queue on what's going on, the issues that are happening in the communities, and getting them to get involved. And, and that's why we're more than just burgers and fries.
Uh, Y'all put out this tweet here. Go to my iPad, please. Y'all tweeted, uh, he's being a fussy hussy. We, he never had a one-night stand. Georgia, no need to pick a side. All our burgers come with fries. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we are with, with, with the press and the, the propaganda, right? Those are the names of our burgers, right? But one thing about Slutty Vegan is we're for everybody, right? Slutty Vegan loves all people. I don't care if you're white, black, blue, yellow, green, Asian, African, it don't matter. One thing we do is we bring the people together in the name of food. And as long as we continue to do that, we got the ear of the people. And when you got the ear of the people, you can get them to do whatever it is that you want to do as long as it is in a positive way. And that's exactly what we've been doing. And so, you know, Purdue is still invited to Slutty Vegan. He probably won't come. He'll probably go back to Waffle House. But listen, he can come have a one-night stand or a fussy hussy any day of the week. All right. So I got to ask. So is everything at Slutty Vegan vegan? Are the fries actual potatoes? Or is it, <laughs> or is it something else that's supposed to be fries? Listen, every single thing, including the owner, myself, is vegan. Everything we do. Listen, wh when I created this company in 2018, I was very specific. I wanted people to reimagine food, right? The food that we grew up knowing and loving. So 97% of the people who come to my business are not even vegan. They're meat eaters. So we're able to really open up people's consciousness in a way that they've never seen it before while giving them an experience at the same time. So, Roland, when you come, you don't even got to stand in line. I got you. I'm going to give you a skip of the line oh, pass. Oh, <laughs> Oh, first of all, I, 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 I got to be assured what actually tastes like. I mean, I, I got, I got. Look, my man, my frat, Lamel McMorris is a super vegan. He took me some spot in Charlotte. He was like, "No, man, this tastes just like a hamburger," and I almost cussed him out. I said, "You try to lean on the shield way too much." Uh, so, 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 I got to be assured. So, if I come there, because in fact, uh, I, we will be, uh, we will be in Atlanta. Thursday, we'll be there through Tuesday. Oh, yeah. uh, and then we're gonna be, we're gonna we'll, actually our crew. We're gonna be in Atlanta uh, three to five days each week uh, covering this race. Uh, so if I come there, uh, uh, w w w what should I get? Because I am an absolutely a carnivore. <laughs> I'm from Texas, born and raised. <laughs> when you come, you got to get the one night stand. But honestly, Roland, bigger than a fool, you're going to be so proud. As a black man, you're going to come to this business and you're going to see we organized, right? We give good customer service. We give a great customer experience. The food going to be hot and warm. And we're going to make you feel like the most important person in the world. And that's why people love us. That's why we've been able to open up four locations in less than two years. So you're just going to be impressed all the way around. So it don't matter what you order. If you want to order <laughs> the receipt on the menu, you're going to be happy. But, but you got to tell me what, what actually tastes like something. Because I, I, I can't be in your restaurant cussing now like homeboy at the restaurant in Dallas. Because, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> now, first of all, when are y'all open? So we are open uh, Tuesday through Saturday, um, and the times differ from each location. We're growing. We're growing super fast. All right. What, so what's the time? What's the time in Atlanta? What's the time you open? Um, it depends on what location. You go to the West End, we open from 12 to 7.30. You go to Clayton County, we open from 12 to 9 o'clock. You go to the heart of Atlanta on Edgewood, we open from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. So wh whatever you want to move for, we got you. Whatever time all right, you so, get All right, can. so here's what we'll do. We'll, fi we'll, figure, we'll figure out... Uh, which uh, one of the locations in which time? Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead because first of all, it's my show. I ain't got to ask nobody permission. So, so, so we'll we'll figure out. We'll, you let me know uh, what's the best spot that can accommodate our cameras and lights. And so, what we'll do is we'll actually do the show. Uh, from <laughs> Slutty Vegan. Uh, we'll do the full two-hour Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, from one of your locations. Uh, and I'll pro y'all, I promise, I promise I will, uh, I will, e I will eat something. I might have to, I might have to, because y'all know, I might have to bring me some barbecue sauce, because barbecue sauce. <laughs> no, you don't. Come on, I, you know, I, look, I, I'm just saying. So, uh, we'll, uh, so we'll see. Candace, uh, Kelly, and Michael, uh, y'all eat anything vegan? Any one of y'all? Absolutely. I do. My, I, I, my, I, I, I am not vegan myself. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I, pull them up. I need to see who's talking. All right, go ahead. Who was talking? Uh, uh, I think Candace first. Go ahead. I think I'm going to hurt you. Oh, oh, I, I do. I, I've, I've seen my sister make vegan cheese out of nuts. I've seen the process, <laughs> not believed in it, and then I ate it, and it tastes good. She's a vegan. We've gone to vegetarian restaurants for Mother's Day and Father's Day, so... Yeah, I've got a lot of people in my family trying to 
twist me over. But that smell of that bacon, I'm just saying. Okay. You know, I, it's tough. <laughs> Kelly, how about really? you? I I am not a vegan, but I do eat some vegan food, depending on where you get it from. Right. It's delicious. I am very familiar with Slutty Vegan. I'm waiting for them to get a brunch menu for D.C. All right. I'm waiting. Michael. Begging. Michael. <laughs> well, Roland, you know I'm like you. I'm a steakhouse guy. But uh, my sister-in-law is a vegan and has taken me to some very tasty vegan restaurants Okay. I have. A vegan Reuben, which was excellent. Well, 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 well Pink, I'm the only Ooh. one who ain't never ate, n- I ain't ate not, <laughs> na- nothing vegan. So, well, we're going to change your life. Uh, well, I don't know if y'all about going to change my life, but but we're going we gonna to try that. So, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks a bunch. And so, uh, I'll get your contact information. So, like I say, when we, when we come to Georgia, we're going to be there pushing the election, and then we'll do the show from one of your locations. Roland, can you please, Roland, can you please make sure the camera's on you when you take a bite of that cheeseburger? No, no, duh. That's what we do. Duh. Duh. (laughs) All right, Piggy, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. See you soon. All right, y'all. Uh, so uh, again, uh, that's see that's what happens when you are stuck on stupid. Pull the panel back up. That's what happens when you stuck on stupid and you a politician uh, and, and 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 you think you taking a shot at somebody and you don't realize uh, how you really step into it. And see now, Purdue, don't bring your ass to Slutty Vegan. Cause see now, nah, don't don't even come by. Cause see then you're really gonna be sitting here uh, being a hypocrite if you try to come by. And so. Uh, uh, black people all across Georgia, David Perdue took a shot at a black-owned restaurant thinking he was taking a shot at John Ossoff. So guess what we should do? Take a shot and throw his ass out of Washington, D.C. Deadline to register in Georgia is Monday. Pull the graphic up, please. The deadline is Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Okay? Monday. The election is January 5th. Early person in voting starts December 14th. So please do that. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Republican efforts to steal the election continues. First, Michigan certifies uh, the results for Joe Biden. Pennsylvania Supreme Court says, ah, hell no, Donald Trump. Your legal arguments are nonsense. But in Georgia, where we have two critical runoff races featuring uh, Pastor Raphael Warnock against Kelly Leffler and then John Ossoff versus David Perdue, Republicans are doing their best to try to steal that election by purging people who just voted in November. Yeah, that's actually happening before us. Already 750,000 absentee ballots have been requested in Georgia. Let's get right to this thing with uh, investigative journalist uh, Greg Palace. Greg, the latest effort, so explain to people what's going on now, how Republicans oh. are trying to first purge people. We are seeing the reports who just voted. I mean, th- three weeks ago, well, but now they're trying to stop people by saying, oh, you need to have a car registra- registered in Georgia to vote in the runoff? 
Uh, I know it sounds insane. And I hope uh, the wonderful Cliff Albright, I do work uh, with Black Voters Matter Fund in Georgia. Uh, he may not know this yet, but Cliff and Roland, this is the strangest thing. My team down there at midnight on Saturday, midnight, gets a notice from the Secretary of State of Georgia, a guy named Brad Raffins Perger. His name really is Perger. He took Brian Kemp's place. He's a Republican, frankly, a Republican stooge. And he issued a new ruling, a proposed rule, um, that would say that you can't register if you don't have a car registered in Georgia and you've proven that you've paid the registration tax on the car. Now, let me be very careful here and how this works. Now, obviously, you no state can require you to buy a car to vote. That right, be that's the most a poll tax. Poll tax. That would be the most expensive to poll tax in world history. What they are saying is rather they are using, they will use the fact that any county election supervisor can use the fact that you don't have a car or you haven't paid the, uh, the Georgia registration tax as proof that you're not a Georgian, that you don't live in Georgia. And and they can therefore listen to this. They they will delay adding your registration to the voter records. By the way, December 7th is the last day to register there. They'll delay your registration until you get a hearing, a hearing. Now, usually you have to have 30 days notice on hearings. And therefore, most people who attempt to register without who don't have a car may find that they are told that they have to show up at a hearing in 30 days which will likely be after the uh, January 5th. Okay, okay, I I'm confused here. I'm really confused here. So what happens with a person who doesn't own a car? I mean... Uh, they, they withhold you. They, they take your registration, but they don't add your name to the list. Who the That's what now, is there a single state in America that requires you to register a car to vote? No, and in fact, this is not the first time that uh, the state of Georgia has tried this gambit. I can tell you one voter that got hit by this a couple years ago, my daughter, who was a voter in Savannah. And um, now understand, it doesn't mean you can't vote. What they might try to do is say that not having a car registered in Georgia means that you don't live here. What, what the Secretary of State office is claiming is that this is to stop people fraudulently registering in Georgia because of the hot Senate race. This will determine control of the U.S. Senate. Uh, so they're afraid, they say they're afraid of people coming into Georgia and simply registering for this runoff. Well, number one, if you are moving to Georgia, you can register for this runoff. But I, um, our person, Terry Manperl, on the ground there uh, was on the call with the Secretary of State and asked, do you have a single case, even one, of a fraudulent voter, someone from out of state voting in the Georgia election in November. Do you have a case of a single voter? Remember, a lot of people have already mailed in their ballots. Um, do you have a case of a single voter who's mailed in a ballot that isn't a Georgia resident, an absentee ballot? Now, is there one case? So you're going to stop thousands of... Now, who gets affected by this law? Again, they don't stop you from registering. They just withhold your registration possibly till after the election and by the way with cliff i have no doubt we're going to be fighting this uh believe me we're going to be fighting this uh, and um so what they're saying is that now who's affected students like my daughter she didn't have a car in georgia she has a new york driver's license because on vacations she would drive in new york so they try to block her from voting she went through the process and, and saved her vote in savannah but how many you know like she said there's almost no students who are willing to fight this and get registered. In addition, of course, the, who's the biggest group that's affected? People who don't have cars, urban, low-income voters. In other words, voters of color. And by the way, the color is generally blue. So they know if they can knock out voters trying to register in Atlanta, new voters, people, remember, they, like you just said, they purge voters, so you have to re-register. We have a site, Save My Vote. 2020.org, where you can see if you've been purged from the Georgia voter rolls. If you are, there's a button, click and re-register. Again, try to do it immediately. Don't wait till December 7th because right. Georgia, there is a delay factor in Georgia. Even if even if you have a car, they're gonna they still have a delay process in Georgia. So please 
check your registration right now, no matter what, and re-register. Believe me, we're don't. And by the way, if you don't have a car registered in Georgia and you live there and you're a student or you're low income, you use a bus, you or you're high income and you use a bus, you don't have a car. Right. Don't let that stop you from registering. Please register. Have all the ID and proof of residence that you can uh, to make sure that no one challenges you because it's also selective. They're making it so that not everyone, in other words, not necessarily white suburban people are going to be asked, oh, you don't have a car? Right. Uh, because after all, you have families where the car is registered in the husband's name, not the wife's name or the opposite. So it's very selective because they it they get to choose whom they challenge. This is really really dangerous stuff and when we first so again midnight saturday and then they had a meeting to vote it into the rules at 8 a.m this morning monday uh 8 a.m and um after a midnight notice this is ugly stuff so what they did was when the pressure came down they said oh we're not going to make it a rule We'll make it a guidance. Nah, well, nah, nah. When you you make it a guidance, that's a rule. And so, but but this is this is what I keep telling people: the kind of games Republicans play. And guess what? The people who I've been calling out, these black Republicans in Georgia, who have been silent, who are watching these people try to screw black people voting. Yes, I'm very concerned. Look, we know it's Jim Crow. You can talk about, oh, the fraudulent voters. Where are these fraudulent voters lined up at the border to march into Georgia to vote? OK, uh, as Cliff can tell you, working there, it's hard to get people to vote once, let alone twice. It's hard. You know, no, people aren't driving in from uh, from Wisconsin to, to vote in Georgia. Yeah, it's not happening. They're not sending in fraudulent ballots. They can't. They had five million ballots. They couldn't show us one fraudulent ballot, not one. But I can tell you that they've disqualified a lot of ballots. And of course, we issued the report, which was issued with Black Voters Matter Fund. Got it. And uh, on 198,000 Georgians removed wrongly from the voter rolls uh, based on a phony purge list. Got it. Uh, this is really serious stuff. And by the way, watch this space. We're going to be taking action. I don't want to say what it is, but believe me, we're not letting this thing go. We're not, not letting this thing go. This is pure Jim Crow. I don't care who you vote for, but don't tell black people, don't tell students, you can't vote. No, no. All right. That's over. Greg Palace, keep us up to date what's going on. We'll keep pushing the information out and uh, supporting you in all that you do. See you at gregpalace.com. Thank you very much, sir. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. In an open letter published on Saturday, dozens of black church leaders from Georgia ordered uh, or demanded to Cindy Kelly Leffler who cease and desist her false characterizations of Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. The, black, the various pastors, the ministerial alliance, believe Luffler's claims that Warnock is radical and a socialist are baseless in a broader attack against the black church and Warnock's faith. Luffler called Warnock a radical liberal 13 times during their, their debate on December 6th and has criticized the pastor in ads for his association with Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright. Now, Leffler responded to the letter and Warnock on Twitter by saying, quote, 
No one attacked the black church. We simply exposed your record in your own words. Joining us right now is Reverend Daryl Winston of Daryl Winston Ministries and Bishop Carl McRae of Ex Ex um, uh, I'm sorry, Ex uh, Exusia Lighthouse International Christian Ministries. Is that correct? I, want to get, I think I yes. pronounced it right. That is correct. All right, then. First of all, let me start with you, um, Reverend Winston. Uh, this letter. Uh, very strong language, highly critical of Kelly Leffler, also by saying, uh, ripping her for her comments about Black Lives Matter, saying she's been quiet about the Proud Boys. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, the, the sheer hypocrisy, uh, taking a page from uh, Trumpism, where they think that they could say anything to, to spew dis, uh, lies and deceit and thinking that we should just take it lying down. And we're saying to her in no uncertain turn, uh, as my as my grandmother and, and they used to, the elders used to say, uh, growing up, you are lie and the truth is not in you. Uh, the thing that we're seeing Bishop McRae, again, uh, Republicans love to talk about faith. They appeal to white conservative evangelicals. They said that uh, folks should not question the faith of Amy Coney Barrett when she was nominated to the Supreme Court, uh, yet they have no problem questioning the faith of Raffer, Pastor, Pastor Raphael Warnock. That is exactly what they said, uh, Brother Roland. Roland. They, um, the cognitive uh, dissonance uh, in that lot, and I do want to say all of them, is uh, amazing to me, that they can stand in judgment of... Uh, uh, and parse every word uttered uh, by this pastor even 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and, and, and then to, uh, in her own voice, call what, uh, uh, if anyone were to question the, 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 the spiritual bona fides of uh, Amy Coney Barrett, uh, she called it disgusting. And that yet she turns around and robotically, repeatedly, uh, uh, attacks uh, Reverend Warnock and expect us to let that go unanswered. I, I don't know what planet she's existed in, but the time has come where we will push back and full-throated at, full at the, 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 the lies that they hurl and expect them to somehow manifest as true. We know, we know scripture. We know our relationship with God. We know the prophetic tradition of Jesus Christ. And we understand that we, they have co-opted Christianity, but we're taking it back. We're taking it back. The thing uh, that, that's also interesting here, uh, Reverend Winston, uh, the, thing, the thing that's very interesting here when we look at uh, what is going on uh, in this race, when, 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 when the fact that Kelly Leffler, one of her first appearances after she replaced Johnny Isaacson, was going to... Ebony's a Baptist church for MLK Absolutely. Day celebration. So, yeah, say, and it's like, so you thought it was, it was so radical, yet you showed up. And she, I was there. She was glad to be in the number. Or she acted as if she was just glad to be in the mix. And in fact, uh, she spoke and she was very gracious. And she even remarked that uh, she looked forward to coming back again. And so we know then that they are taking this bread and butter play from the late Lee Atwater, who got his from uh, Nixon, the whole Nixonian playbook, uh, to stroke the fear in their voting block, this fear-mongering, sheer racism. But I, we detest the mockery. And to make mockery, we know that they, the Euro-American uh, ch uh, churches and white evangelicals, have long... Uh, express their disdain for the African American congregations and despise and prophetic uh, preaching. I told them this morning we forget that when Dr. King spoke out against the Vietnam War at Riverside in 1967, he was persona non grata. And then now all of them claim to love Dr. King and seek to hijack his message. They talk about the 63 Dr. King, but they don't want to deal with that 67 and 68 Dr. King that call for the redistribution of wealth. And so we're saying, because you got people in our community who are ahistorical, they don't have a sense of historical continuity. They don't see anything wrong. And so we're so grateful that these over 100 interfaith clergy uh, decided to join us and more are saying, add me to the list. 
And in the next few days leading up to the election, we, are, we have a multi-tier approach where we're going to be pushing back because we know then that they, meaning the powers that be and those who bow at the shrine of Trumpism, will say anything or try to get away with saying anything and think that we're supposed to accept it. Well, one of the things that also jumps out at me uh, on this is that she's attacked him saying he's anti-Israel. Yet there have been a number of uh, uh, Jewish leaders who come out in support of Ravio Warnock. You've got John Ossoff, who is Jewish, who's running with him. Uh, so you would think if somebody was so anti-Jewish, they would not be supporting him. But again, what people need to understand, when white conservatives talk, say he's anti-Jewish, they really are appealing to those white conservative evangelicals uh, who hold this very lofty view, this biblical view of Israel. They, they equate and Zionism with Judaism and many rabbis here in Atlanta and abroad uh, are working now on a piece where they are addressing the Jewish community, long history with the African-American church. One of my favorite, uh, Rabbi Joshua Heschel, who Dr. King marched with and other rabbis were right there in the midst. So Ebenezer and Warnock has maintained a long uh, history of working in the Jewish community. The, the services are often uh, interfaith in terms of the commemorative services that the King Center runs there. But there are many different, for instances, uh, Warnock and the good people of Ebenezer interface and interacting with the Jewish community. And as you know, as of late, there has been this whole push toward silencing and muzzling prophetic preaching uh, that, of course, is concerned not just with redemption from personal sins, but addressing, as Jesus did, those oppressive conditions caused by man. So we ought to be able to say all li Palestinian lives matter. That's preachers of the gospel. Uh, Cuban lives matters and lives in the Congo matters. For them to uh, seek to check the preacher is an attempt to do what they hadn't been done, had, wasn't able to do in times past, but they think that they can now uh, push us into a corner where we just sit down and preach an otherworldly by and by when we die message so that we can become enablers of systemic evil that they perpetuate on a daily basis. Well, I certainly hope that folks uh, in Georgia are going to respond uh, in kind. Uh, to what is uh, happening by turning out at the polls. The best way to shut them up is to beat them. Simple yes, as sir. that. Gentlemen, we certainly yes, appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you, Roland, for having us. Love your show, and we appreciate you opening up your platform for us to share. No, I thank appreciate you, it. Thank you so very much. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. After uh, Pastor Warnock and uh, Ambassador Andrew Young voted, uh, then uh, Warnock held a news conference uh, where he talked uh, with the media uh, and addressed those. Did not take any questions but he certainly wanted to speak on what it felt like on this day 
uh, to vote for himself in this run rather than do so next to one of his heroes. Uh, here's what Warnock had to say. Morning. The line was all the way back at the end. And as I went right down the line, and most of the people were senior citizens like me, and I realized how long we've been on this march. And First of all, let me say that it is a very humbling thing for a kid who grew up in public housing to be able to cast a vote for himself to serve in the United States Senate. Only in America is my story even possible. And so I'm grateful for this moment, grateful for my father of a blessed memory, and I'm grateful for my mother who grew up in Waycross, Georgia, picking tobacco and cotton during the summers. And today she gets to help pick her son Man. to be one of the next two United States senators from the great state of Georgia. So I just want to encourage everyone to exercise your constitutional right to vote. And as I've been saying all across this state, we should no longer be talking about election day. The stakes are too high. This is election season. And so early voting begins today. People should make their way to the polls. It's a beautiful day yes, sir. It is. to vote. So make your way to the polls. Early voting today, December 14th through December 31st. We also remind people that they can vote by mail. It was a humbling thing to vote for myself today, but let me tell you more than a name, what's really on the ballot. Health care is on the ballot. A livable wage is on the ballot. Criminal justice reform is on the ballot. Voting rights. All of these issues are on the ballot. And so thank you so much. Make a plan to vote. Gather everybody in your circle. This is a defining moment in American history. Georgia is at the center of it. Let's show up the way Georgia does. Thank you so much. Pastor, how does it feel with Ambassador you. Young uh, voting with you? Yeah, let me, let me just say I'm, I'm deeply honored uh, to have Ambassador Young here. Um, He's the reason I'm able to stand here. Amen. He and those who fought alongside him. Our ballot is a bloodstained ballot. And so I want to thank him and all the others who fought alongside him. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and grateful. Young video just It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. George, I know things are tough right now, but I want you to know help is on the way. My administration is preparing to beat COVID-19 and get economic relief to the American people. On day one as your president, I'm prepared to sign a COVID relief package that fully funds the public health response needed, led by Georgia's own CDC. It will ensure free testing and vaccination for every American, and will get small businesses the assistance they need right now. Let me be clear, I need Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff 
in the United States Senate to get this done. There are folks in Congress threatening to do everything in their power to block our efforts. We need you to get out there and vote for John Ossoff as well as Raphael Warnock. We need them in the Senate. God bless America and may God protect our troops. I'm Raphael Warnock. And I'm John Ossoff. And, and we, we approve, approve this message. message. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. As Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Jim, I want to ask you this here. I want to ask you this here about this particular race here uh, between Lef Leffler uh, and Warnock. Uh, it, is, it, it is about turnout. It is about turnout. But what you have here, Jim, though, is you have Kelly Leffler, who's saying, I'm an outsider, who is viciously attacking Black Lives Matter, who, who is rolling with this whole notion, uh, the polar whites of the world, saying they are a terrorist organization. Uh, and so Kelly Leffler, I'm going to get your thoughts on it, appears, her deal is, if I can scare the hell out of white voters as much as I can, by saying this man is a lover of terrorist organizations and Black Lives Matter. But you noted in your column when she visited Ebenezer in January. So was he a terrorist then? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> question, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, yeah, she was there on MLK Day. That was kind of her, her, her public debut as a U.S. senator because she had just been th uh, sworn in uh, a couple of weeks earlier and she had she kept a lid on her on, on her on her on her public uh, announcements, uh, she was at that point she was being groomed as kind of a, 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 a suburban friendly uh, replacement for Isaacson, and Isaacson had had cultivated this this interesting relationship with with Warnock. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he'd been uh, he, he had he had been at MLK ceremonies for the last twenty five years. He was kind of the, he was the most dependable Republican attorney uh, attendee, uh, and sometimes he was the only Republican of note there. And and it was kind of his statement, his his very quiet statement that that, that the Republican Party couldn't survive as a white only party. Uh, and uh, and uh, Leffler was 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 up there uh, and and uh, to uh, uh, to to kind of replace that. She said the right words. I mean, you know, they were. They were a little bit uh, vague, uh, but she she carried that off well, uh, relatively well. And uh, ever since, uh, I mean, uh, she she got tied up in that that fight with Doug Collins for uh, you know from February really up in, into November, and then man, her focus has been on Warnock, and and yes, she is <coughs> clearly they have been going through years and years and years of Warnock sermons. I mean, the guy is out there. It's you know, it's 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 uh, and 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 in this the, the case that I cited, they had to go back to 2011 to to, to pick up on maybe you know maybe just a a, a, a slight a slight uh, 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 lack of lack of phrasing. Uh, you know, America, you can't be you can't serve God and the military. Uh, uh, that was the last three minutes of a, a 45 minute sermon. And if you listen to the front part of that, you know, you've been, you've, you, Roland, you, you've been to enough churches. You know what, what, what was being said. You yeah. know, it, it was, it was a matter of priority. Hell, my wife is you a minister. God, my wife is a pastor. God, I know about preaching. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you serve God first and then you go to, 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 to your second, uh, uh, to, to your, to your second love. Uh, and that's all. That's all he was saying. That is. That is all he was saying. And yes, that got twisted. And uh, uh, it's it's very clear that they're they're trying to do the same thing that they did with uh, with Jeremiah Wright and, and Obama in two thousand eight. And but but to your point, to your point, uh, what's happening here is that you've got both Ossoff and Warnock running as a as as a team. They're running as a ticket. Uh, Purdue and Leffler are running as a ticket, and clearly, what they have what they have decided is that Warnock is the man to attack, because you know if 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 if, if vote if, if black voters turn out for him in heavy numbers, they're in trouble. 
Uh, well, I really okay. hope they are going to be in trouble. Uh, Jim Galloway, very good column there on Land Journal Constitution. We appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this Robert, uh, I want to pull you in here. You're there in Georgia. Look, it's going to be a turnout deal. Again, they, they, they want to they demonize uh, Warnock as much as possible. They want to tag him with defund the police. They want to tag him with Black Lives Matter. Uh, but the bottom line is this here. Uh, are you seeing black people extremely energized? Are you seeing those suburban areas energized? Uh, and then you've got these stuck on stupid Republicans, uh, what they're doing. You, they had the news conference today talking about stop the steal. They make it all the allegations in a second. I'm about to play this video of the Georgia election official going off on Republicans uh, saying, sowing seeds of discontent in the state. Well, you're absolutely right, Roland. And what, what you have to realize, what's going on here in Georgia, the reason that they are attacking Warnock like this is because they are afraid for their lives. Uh, Kelly Loeffler has no resume. She has nothing to fall back on. Uh, she was running a commercial right now for our friend Janelle in it, um, saying, talking about how she lived paycheck to paycheck to get through college, when in reality her family leveraged their farm to pay her way through college and grad school. Um, she w worked for a job for about three years and then married the CEO. He bought her a basketball team and he bought her a Senate seat. That is the extent of what we know about Kelly Loeffler here in Georgia, and that's why they have to attack Warnock in this way. This morning, uh, Rainbow Push Coalition, along with Latasha Brown, Black Voters Matter, uh, C.K. Hoffler, the uh, National Bar Association, Association Journalist Greg Palace, filed a lawsuit. Our local counsel, J uh, Gerald Griggs, demanding that they return the 200,000 names to the election, uh, uh, to the rolls that were purged by uh, by Secretary of State Raffensperger um, so that we can have a free and fair election in January. If you return 200,000 people to the voting rolls and you get the normal 10% of turnout that you get in a general election, that's enough to sway the election one way or the other. So Republicans have been running on a campaign of voter suppression in Georgia for over 20 years, whether that's a um, the poll tax that they disguised as voter ID 20 years ago, whether it's gerrymandering and redistricting in 2010, um, F, uh, the Diebold machines, which were in use in Georgia from 2000 till the last election cycle. And what we're seeing now is that by uh, motivating the 35% of the state that's African-American, the 12% of the state that's Latino, the 52% of the state that's women, uh, the LGBTQ population, our college student population, you have the ability to flip the state permanently. Demographically, they have been a blue state for 20 years. It's been voter suppression that's kept, kept that from happening in the, uh, in the actual voter turnout. And what we saw in 2018 was when Stacey Abrams ran a bold, progressive campaign, not a uh, Jason or uh, Jason Carter campaign, not a Michelle Nunn campaign, where you just try to get those old Reagan Republicans who used to be Democrats 40 years ago to come back, but really tried to motivate people uh, who were in part of the progressive base to turn out. We saw that she nearly won that election. That went a long way to flipping the uh, to flipping the state. So we have to keep motivating those people, fight for vo uh, fight for voting rights, fight to get people back on the rolls, and that's how you win elections, not by trying to cajole old former Confederates to come back to the Democratic Party. Hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, Roland, uh, my colleague is absolutely right, but that only works, we've seen from 2018 and 2020, is when the coalition that he just described gets to the polls and votes in huge numbers. The Republicans can't win without voter suppression. They can't win without scaring their voters. The only way they can motivate their base to get out is to suppress the Democratic base and the people of color base and the suburban women base, because there are not enough Republican votes who follow their unfriendly policies or offensive policies. And so you're right. In the end, it's about getting your base out to vote. But the only way the Republicans can do that is to scare them and to suppress the Democratic votes or to or to. Uh, throw people off the voting rolls and what have you. So the playbook, we've seen it over and over again. The question for January 5th is, can the Democratic base, can black folks get out and Latinos and women get out in major numbers again? Because that's the only way you find yourself with a true blue state called Georgia. It's the only way. And it, it's a heavy lift that we've done once, but can we do it again? Well, again, and that's why I dare say if you're trying to get black people out, you ain't got no problem with defund the police. Monique? Most black people don't even agree with defunding the police. I'm sorry, show they me. Don't. Show, I'm sorry, we show me. Based, hold up, based upon what? No, 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 hold, stop, stop, stop. Based we upon what? To be stop. Based upon what? <coughs> show me proof. Show you proof of what? I'll show me show proof. You 
data. Uh, show me the data. Uh, what's, polling show, data what's, the, that what's the polling data? That black people what's the polling data? Community don't want you to fund the police. They want the police to be better. They want the police to have what enough poll is that? funding. What poll is that? They want to put money into mental health. What services. poll is that? The what poll is that, That's Scott? Scott, what the poll is that? Scott, what they poll is that? Scott, what poll Period. is that? It's a dumb state. Scott, what poll is that? Well, the, uh, the Washington Post poll, the Pew uh, Trust, look it up. All of them say that the majority of people of color do not want the police to be defunded. They want the police to be better in their communities. Mm-hmm. Monique, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, I noticed. I noticed you. Hey, you didn't really cite exactly the poll. You just threw some names out. But go ahead, Monique. Hold on. Nice try. But you like, oh, look it up. Go ahead, Monique. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Roland. Are you gonna act like you don't know that black people in poor communities want the police? That they are the ones who call the police more than anybody else. Duh. They want. Duh, stop. Hold up. That that wasn't the question I asked. No, no, stop. That wasn't that wasn't the question I asked. Yeah, I'm speaking. No, no. Oh, if you're gonna say something, Lord. if you're gonna say I said of, something, be factual. Energy. Go it's ahead. A whole lot of male energy. Oh, first first of all, this 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 say male energy or female energy. It's called I'm energy. Speaking. No, if okay, you're gonna well, say let's something, just, let's, back it up. Go. Let's just have manners. Go. Scott I got manners. Was absolutely correct, right? That that it is black people in poor communities who want more police presence rather than less. It is people who don't need black b police presence in their communities, who don't ever see the police, who if they see the police, it's an I'm aware of that, but that I'm rule. aware of that, but that's not what I asked. See, here you go. Here no, you go. no, but if you, but if you actually answer the question I asked, as opposed to trying to deflect, answer the question I asked. Oh, God. I believe I, I answered when I said you know and I know, as Scott said, that black people by and large want more police presence in poor neighborhoods than less. And the reason why we are saying defund is because we have an understanding through study, through empirical evidence, through science, that we can use less money and more community presence and smarter yes. policing yes. to get to a different result. Yes. All I am saying, and I agree with my brother Scott, which this is like two weeks in a row, and I'm impressed with myself, is <laughs> in Georgia, in Georgia, y'all scaring these people, and if you don't want Georgia, fine, go ahead, stand, be. They're not, they're not defund, scaring them in Georgia. Defund, no, they're not. Defund the no, they're police. not. No, they're Keeping not. The police off. You know what? They're not scaring me, Georgia. Georgia like, they're not. You know, Georgia. Listen. They're not. The people, the good white folks who you want, they don't want this. And they're if not. you think that just black people can vote and we can win in Georgia, then I got a bridge they're in not. Georgia that I can sell you. It's on Lake Kono. And here's the whole deal, Robert. There are white people who are also turning out who have enough sense to not fall for the Republican okie doke who understand when people say, D I, when I, you don't, don't you dare try to say reclaim your time when you want to talk now. I'm reclaiming Here's my the time. whole deal, Robert. People are smart enough <laughs> to know when people have said defund the police, they mean shifting of resources. They mean like in, like in San Francisco, in San Francisco, as opposed to sending the cops out when there's a mental call, they send out mental health professionals, those who advocate defund the police have explained what it means. The opposition simply does not want to hear that. Robert, final word. They are not well, smart. Uh, Robert, final dumb. word. Robert, they final word. Robert, well, they, Robert I, I, final word that I'm about to talk about Georgia. The election official going off next. I, I think when we're talking about winning Georgia being the most important thing in politics right now, you have to dance with who brought you here. It was a bold, progressive agenda. Uh, it was uh, it was turning out young people, turning out African Americans, turning out minorities, turning out liberal whites, uh, turning out people who are against the idea of Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue and Donald Trump. And I think you have to you can't change your messaging now. Fight through, push through, and that's how you win. Go with the one who brung you. That's all I'm saying. And here to all the Democrats out there who run in purple districts, maybe you should run some better races and not allow yourself to be branded. Uh, maybe because your maybe your messaging was whack. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. 
This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, uh, here in Atlanta with broadcast and, of course, still covering the Georgia runoff here uh, in um, uh, uh, in Atlanta. Uh, we've been all over the state. And the folks, Black Voters Matter, they've also been all around the state as well. And what they have been doing is battling not just to re not just to get black folks registered to get them to vote, but also how Republicans are trying to stymie black folks from voting. They were in Brunswick, Georgia today uh, in an emergency hearing. Hearing. Joining us right now is Cliff Albright, the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Uh, Cliff, always glad to have you in Roland Martin Unfiltered. Always glad to be here, Roland. Thanks. All right, Cliff, so tell our folks exactly what happened today in Brunswick, Georgia. Yeah, so we were in Brunswick, Georgia on a, actually a pre-scheduled stop to do one of our regular events of, of doing a food and toy donation. When we found out last night that there was going to be an emergency hearing called because of these complaints that have been filed by this group called True the Vote, which is definitely a misnomer. Um, this is a group, um, conservative and in many ways just outright racist group that has gone around even in previous election cycles um, trying to get voters purged from lists. What they're doing right now in Georgia is that they're saying they're going to file complaints in all 159 counties. But today in Blinn County, what was called was an emergency hearing because of what they had filed in Glynn County. For those who don't know, Glynn County is where Brunswick is, which is where Ahmaud Arbery was murdered and where the, the DA that tried to bury the case at first was recently voted out. And so that's why this county, like many others, is being targeted for this type of voter purge. So the, there was a court hearing today, which we attended. Um, it was a three-person, it's really a five-person board of elections, but only three members were present. And the person from this organization, actually, it was a local representative, a, a former um, state representative who represents that area was the person that was actually presenting the complaint in court. Then they allowed for some uh, public comments. I spoke on behalf of not only Black Voters Matter, but also a coalition of organizations that had sent a letter um, from that Legal Defense Fund, as well as other organizational partners that we have from across the state. Um, we sent a letter, and so I referenced the information in that letter, and I explained to them why it would be a violation of not just federal law, but state law for them to move forward and to consider this complaint. You're not allowed to have any kind of purging or cleansing of voter lists within 90 days of an election, let alone within two weeks of a federal election. So that on the face of it made it um, an irrelevant and frivolous claim. And so I let them know that, as well as some other issues, some other local folks um, gave their public comments as well. And after very brief deliberations, the uh, board decided to not um, to not find probable cause, which essentially meant that they would not be moving forward with this complaint from this group. Now, what folks also need to understand is that the uh, a judge also ruled that the Secretary of State should sit down with various civil rights groups, including Black, Black Voter Matters, over the purging uh, folks uh, from the voting rolls. Uh, I, uh, we, of course, the Latasha Brown, uh, and uh, when we were, of course, uh, in uh, Savannah on Friday, she was at the state capitol. Uh, she posted some photos of that on her social media page. I'm going to show that in a moment. But Cliff, what is the status of that? Yeah, we still haven't heard back from the state on that. And so, you know, what we're hoping is that the court will 
fine that they're just in contempt of court. The court gave an order which basically said to work this out. We've done our due diligence trying to get them to respond by phone, by email, and as you referenced, even going down to the Capitol building to meet with the Secretary of State. They continue to respond, to fail to respond. And so what we're hoping is that the court will ultimately just find them in contempt and decide to rule in our favor. And, to, and, and with the, the remedy that we're seeking is that those voters, and again, this is a purge that goes back to 2019. This isn't a purge from this year, but the implications, the, the, the consequences of that pur purge are still being felt today because we don't know how many of those 200,000 that were legally purged um, have not yet been re-registered. Re so the remedy we're seeking is that they automatically get re-registered. We don't want them to have to um, file anything, to, to call anybody, to you know jump through any hoops. They were purged illegally, and so we want them to automatically be put back on the rolls. They know who they purged. They know who they need to put back on, and that's what we're demanding. If the Secretary of State continue, continues to hide and, and duck and dodge and try to avoid us, then we expect for the court to find to, to find them in contempt. And again, again, let me be real clear here. The courts ruled for y'all to sit down, and the Secretary of State has not even responded. He's ducking and dodging, Roll. They have not responded to repeated attempts to work this out as ordered by the court. Um, there's there's really nothing else to be done. We can't do anything more. We, we essentially almost had to sneak into the Capitol building just to serve them with the papers, to serve them with the notice that we were trying to, um, to, to, to work this out and to have a discussion around it. And so there's really nothing else that we can do other than to, to wait for the court to decide that, that the Secretary of State is being non-responsive and they just need to rule in our favor. I mean, if, the, if one side is not going to present their information, is not going to follow the court order, you know, we don't need to be dragging this out, and we're really concerned that that's, that's what's going on here, that the Secretary of State feels that if they could just drag this out, that at some point the courts will just have to decide, well, look, it's only two weeks left. There's nothing we can do. Um, and so we know that that's the strategy. That's why we were aggressive in trying to meet with them. They're failing to respond. We think that the court needs to act now. In fact, uh, Cliff, I I'm showing these are the photos that Latasha posted from three days ago, where, to your point about sneaking in, they were avoiding y'all, uh, and uh, y'all had to track them down to serve them with these papers. They did not actually want to meet with Black Voters Matter. No, no. When they, when they found that we were in there and, and had the papers to give them, it was like catching somebody with their hands in a cookie jar. You know, they, they were uh, pretty much like, oh, how you get in here? Well, you know, that's what we do. We find a way, you know, whatever it is that we have to do to protect our folks' right to vote, um, we're going to make that happen. And whether that's um, um, going to the Capitol to, to serve them with papers or whether that's showing up today in Glenn County to demand that these voters not be purged um, and that they follow the law, that you can't do this kind of list maintenance within 90 days. We're going to do whatever it takes to let them know that we're not standing by it. And what's important is that, you know, especially in these rural counties, because the same thing they're trying to do in Glenn County, they're trying to do in counties all over the state. They're, they're trying to do it. They already tried it in Cobb and it was shot down. They tried it in Muskogee and that Board of Elections actually um, found that there was some probable cause to at least look into it. Doesn't mean that they're purging folks, but still even looking into it has a chilling effect, right? It has the effect of, of intimidating voters with the thought that they might be asked, why did you change your address? Where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you voting for, right? And so they try to do these things in these rural counties. And part of why we do what we do, why we roll through in these communities with the blackest bus in America is because we want our folks to know that they are not alone. And there were several people from Brunswick in that courthouse today who said, you know what? I thought I was going to be here by myself. I was so glad to see y'all. That's the kind of impact that we want to have in communities. We don't want anybody in our communities who's trying to fight for truth. We who believe in freedom shall not rest. We don't want folks to feel like um, that they're alone in these battles. So it was really important to us that we were there today, that we were in the Capitol the other day serving those papers, and we will continue to be in every county, wherever there are black voters facing these issues. That's where we're going to show up, along with some incredible state partners. You know, big thanks to LDF for for drafting a letter that was sent to the Glen County Board of Elections today. And again, Cliff, that, that is the thing that made, so here we are in the middle of an election. Uh, we're sitting here trying to get folks out and y'all are on the front lines just to make sure 
that Republicans in this state are not trying to intimidate black voters, trying to suppress black voters, because they clearly understand the empower, they understand the power of the black vote, and this is how they want to win. They do not want to win on the issues. They frankly want to win by cheating. Yeah, and it's and hilarious. I said that to them. They keep yelling, uh, you know, stop the steal. They keep yelling, stop the steal, but that's what they're trying to do. Right, right. The, the, the levels of hypocrisy are mind blowing, right? And I mentioned that to them in my public comments to the Board of Elections today because what they were trying to argue is that they don't know who these voters are, right? They're just doing this. They're just trying to clean the roads. We don't know who's going to be impacted. We don't know what the race of the voters are. And what I told the Board of Elections is, look, we got to be honest here, right? We just, we just got to we just got to deal with the reality. We know why they're doing this. They know who it is that would be purged by this. At the same, in the same breath that they were arguing that they know that these weren't military um, people because they didn't want to act like they were trying to purge military. So they said, no, we, we researched it and these aren't military. And oh, we researched it and these aren't students. So like I said to the, in the to the Board of Elections, I said, you know what? They're telling us they know everything there is to know about these voters. They know whether they're military, whether they're students. They know their shoe size. They know what their favorite food is to eat. But somehow they want us to believe that they don't know their race. That doesn't make sense, right? That just flies in the face of, of everything that we know. We know why it is that they're, that they're doing this. We know that they're mad because Georgia flipped in November. We know that they're scared, as you said, that they're running scared because of the historic voter turnout that we've seen in the first week of early voting, plus the vote by mail. They, we know that they're scared because of the momentum. We know that they're mad because of what happened in Brunswick and Glynn County where they got rid of the DA. This is why they're using these tactics, and especially in a place like Brunswick and Glynn County. We need not be naive about what's going on. In fact, one of the acts that I cited and that the LDF cited in the letter, this isn't just a violation of the recent, of the Voting Rights Act or the Help America Vote Act. The intimidation that this represents goes to the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act. And so I mentioned that in court in, in the hearing today, and I looked dead at the representative who was bringing this hearing when I referenced the KKK Act, because that's all that's going on. It is the same kind of intimidation. They want our voters to have to answer questions about why they're voting a certain way or where they lived or where they moved to and all this stuff. That's intimidation, and we're not having it. That's what we we're trying to do today. That's what we're trying to do with the, the lawsuit that we have against the Secretary of State. All right, then. Cliff Albright, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, look, keep us abreast. Uh, whatever happens, uh, y'all know y'all can come on here at any time uh, to break this thing down, and we're going to keep, uh, you know, pressing uh, and making it perfectly clear that uh, we are watching and paying attention. Thank you so much, Roland. Be on the lookout. Valdosta is next up. We're fighting for that as well, too. And that's, in this case, thousands of voters at the potential trying to purge in Valdosta, Georgia. All right, then. All right, Cliff Albright, co founder of Black Voters Matter. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Roland. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, last week, uh, the first day of early voting, uh, Raphael Warnock uh, went to the polls and he voted with 
uh, Ambassador Andrew Young. Well, today, John Ossoff actually decided to go vote. We were there, uh, and he actually had a little shout-out for our uh, folks uh, who, who watched this show. Uh, so uh, check this out. Hello to the whole Roland Martin. As I said, uh, John Ossoff uh, met with a group of folks uh, not at the Metropolitan Library uh, across the street at a park. Uh, we were actually there uh, covering that. He spoke to them. Uh, and also, uh, he was joined by folks with the, Mill the, the Millennial Civil Rights Project. They were there uh, standing with him uh, as he uh, went and voted early today. Uh, and there, there should be, so y'all should be seeing some video there uh, of uh, John Ossoff in the voting booth uh, casting his early vote. As I last week, of course, Warnock voted. More than uh, 1.3 million folks have voted uh, early already, in-person voting, but in addition to in-person voting, uh, also uh, folks who voted early uh, by absentee ballot. They have drop boxes uh, in various locations uh, across uh, the country in order for people to be able to drop off their ballots if they don't want to stand in line. Now, of course, Republicans do not like uh, those drop boxes at all. They don't like those drop boxes at all. And so uh, what they prefer uh, is for folks to, to stand in line. Uh, it was not a long line. In fact, uh, Ossoff, uh, it, he voted uh, rather quickly compared to last week uh, when uh, Raphael Warnock uh, voted. There uh, was a lot more folks in line that first day. Uh, but again, it was, uh, it was, um, it was good to see uh, the folks out there uh, at Metropolitan Library here in Atlanta uh, where he went uh, and voted. Uh, to uh, cast his ballot. And of course, there are three races. There are three races folks are voting on. His race against Senator David Perdue, uh, Warnock against Kelly Leffler, and, as well as an African American uh, who is running for the Public uh, Utility Commission. That's, that's an important position. He would be the first Democrat elected in 20 years to that particular, uh, particular position. And so we're going to actually uh, chat with him uh, a little bit later this week. And so bring you Daniel Blackman talking about uh, his important race. So these three runoff races are on the ballot. All efforts are out there uh, to get uh, folks focus on that. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Actress Lynn Whitfield starred, of course, in Greenleaf on the... Uh, I'm Lynn Whitfield. First Lady of the Church, so it was only fitting that she would be out here uh, to speak on behalf of John Ossoff. Uh, after she uh, addressed the crowd here, she and I had an opportunity to chat about politics. I'm Lynn Whitfield. Hello, Roland Martin. Uh, now, uh, it's not uncomfortable for you to be standing in front of a church, First Lady. pulled together this rally uh, of young people, people who have just registered to vote, people who have been in the streets protesting and about to do the greatest protest of all, which is to have their voice heard through the vote. Because these young people are the people who are going to keep everybody honest once we vote them in. And I'm in Georgia, the epicenter of everything right now. Uh, for Ossoff 
and Warnock, and this is a rally. We are what a month out from the next election, and um, it's very exciting. These kids, your, your brothers were up there stepping, and the students are out here very excited and very engaged. So I'm very, very happy about where we are right now, but we have so much work to do. Now, for the folks out there who don't know, who don't realize, uh, you are a political junkie. Oh! Let, me tell, let me tell y'all something. When I, when I was at CNN, the man used to be texting me when I was on the air. Bro, the same thing. The thing is, I'm like, man, I'm working. What you doing? I don't text you at work. No, but really, though, because Roland, throughout his time, throughout your time, you have spoken for our community clearly. And I had access to you when I was so upset about what they were doing and how they were making Sarah Palin a star. That, this was in 2008. And you helped me to understand how it works because I did exactly what you said, you know? So I just want to thank you. And y'all, we all need to thank him because he is always on the front line no matter what. You're on the front line for our community, and I so appreciate you. A lot of people don't want to hear celebrities talk about politics. Uh, but, I don't blame them. But, but you also don't care because uh, <laughs> you have always been actively involved in not just the election, but also when the election is over. Yeah, well, you know what, Roland? It, it, it's not about celebrity. I mean, I just come as a citizen. I come because, you know, my mother is 89 years old, and my daughter is still a millennial. I come because I really love this country, and I really am so upset about what has been happening over the last four years. So I'm not coming with any authority of my career. I come with the commitment of, like, I just want to be involved in rolling up my seeds and helping. I mean, look at my, I made this. <laughs> I made that my vote fashion, y'all. I made, I made, you know what I mean? I just love America. This is a cool spot, and it has to be shared. So I'm not coming like a celebrity, you know. I just come like a a Baton Rouge homegirl. <laughs> campaign event vir virtual birthday for her and they're trying to all kinds of shenanigans I mean you know I don't know what they're doing because she knows I'd be there if she needed me but uh, we're going to do some more virtual stuff okay yes. all right, man. Well, yes. man, it's always a pleasure chatting with you it's glad such to a... see you out here uh, <laughs> standing up on behalf of John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock we're free yes here. indeed they are great men and they will be great senators so I'm excited all right thanks a bunch all right I thank you it. I can't even <laughs> it's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.